Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the one that you've been waiting for. HSEL Homeroom Spring Major comes to an end right now with leg day and Woo -hoo -hoo, baby, it's time. Grand finals up on the dock, and I couldn't be more ready. It's been a long season. It's been a fun one. We've watched these high schools duke it out. The Q system has worked immaculately. Might I say, to get us the best possible grand finals matchup for today, I could not be more excited, Legs. Yeah, it has worked out absolutely wonderfully in terms of our new Q system. We've got our top seeds coming through with the best possible grand finals that we could have asked for. And these guys are fighting hard. They want that scholarship prizing money door. And while we are all looking forward to that action-packed grand finals there is so much more than just that in our show today yeah we got a little bit of a pre-show going on we get to walk through the bracket how we got here there are 32 teams in total who came in at the beginning of this week they've played all the way through a bracket now we get to watch the quarterfinals the semis and the finals but i mean i, I don't think it's too soon to tell people who got to the finals we won't we won't tease you that long. It's NQHS <laughs> and Wichita Buffs all the way up at the tippity top. Let's take a look at how they got there. for this now we're all hyped up wichita buff i've been preaching i've been telling everybody about the gospel that is this wichita team that is their esports <laughs> all the way but nqhs looks just as crazy and we get to watch all those matches through the semi-finals as well like they, the game just keep getting better it's gonna get better and better but speaking of good things we've got a bunch of good teams who are in this tournament even if only two are left so let's have a look at who managed to survive 
our gauntlet of teams going through the regular season. Here we'll look at our standings. You'll recognize the two at the top because they were both just heavily featured in that beautiful highlight reel. North Quincy and, of course, Wichita Buffs, both coming out of our uh, Q system. Eight and zero is seeds one and two, and they proved why they've won so many of those matches. Look, I, I got to say, I got at the beginning of the season, I was like, hey, this is a cool, cool Q system we got going. The fact that it has worked this well is actually an incredible. It, it touts just how perfect it's been for HSCL. Well, we've got the opportunity. Look to sign yourself up for the next season. I'm not sure if it's on the website or not yet, but I mean, if the games are going to be this good, you might as well do it. Let's take a look, though. From 16 all the way down to 32, we had even more teams coming into this finals week. Yeah, our playoffs bracket did feature 32 teams, ranging from the 8s and 0s to the 5s and 3s that you can currently see. Let's have a quick look at how that bracket shaped up. Because it is the 32-team bracket, it can't all be in one graphic, otherwise you just wouldn't be able to read the name. So this is the <laughs> first half of the bracket. It's not an upper bracket. They are on equal footing. But this will give you some idea of how a bunch of our teams managed to play this out. You want to straight up look at the top. First seed versus 32nd seed. That 2-0 is no surprise to anybody, but going up against the 16th seed afterwards, North Quincy remains dominant. Yeah, and let me tell you what, right? The dominance is, is pretty much through the round of 16, but once we get up to those quarterfinals... Oh my god, did the games get close. Let's take a look at the bottom half of the bracket, though, here. It doesn't mean worst teams, it just means it's on the lower half, because we can't show it all like, like they did say. And I want to talk about some teams that I, I feel a little bit rough for. SBAP, I, I don't think they were able to play their match. They were a sleeper team that I had coming in. Just, like, they, they, they were, ah, they were going to make me so many channel points, but they, they couldn't play their match, unfortunately. <laughs> the rest of the teams here, though, did plenty of a good job. Yeah, the channel point investment economy currently in shambles and zero zeros <laughs> are the uh, unfortunate forfeits where some of our teams may have had some kind of difficulty that stopped them from playing. However, we've given you a little look as to where our top 32 teams ended up, but let's focus and let's hone in now on our top eight for our quarter finals brackets. And well, there's some nice names right here, but as always, you're going to want to focus in on NQHS, North Quincy, and Wichita Buffs, who are going to be, at the end of everything, our finalists for the long match later. Well, before we break this whole bracket down, let's just start off with the first match. We've got the highlights from the quarterfinals. It'll be NQHS up against VHHS for our first highlight of the night. And of course, this one is a best of three. So it was a first to two for these teams to get three. We start things off on ascent. VCV right here, starting off on the defense. Already 2-0 over North Quincy, which is a great place to be. And you can see the boss is trying to take things into their own hands. But when it comes to Sova versus Sova, they aren't going to be able to win that one out against Bolt. Yeah, and, you know, despite the Cougars' best efforts here, the match did end up going to three maps. So I think there's some credit to be given here for holding on. The quarterfinals really made things tight. And I, I think you and I know a little something, something about these semifinals and just how many overtimes we end up seeing. The games just get so good, but Evan 88er gets better. <laughs> yes, he does. North Quincy now swapping over on to the defense. And you know that these guys do not rest there. The 8-5 lead overall. There's a nice flawless defense from North Quincy going up against VCV. And one thing I want to keep an eye on... Right in front. <laughs> Unfortunate. One thing I want to keep an eye on during these matches, though, is what compositions these teams are running. Because we're, we're a bit of a shifting meta, right? We're seeing more Astro. We're seeing more Viper being tossed around, especially on maps like Icebox. I think having teams that can utilize those... I don't want to say newer agents, but the, the more popular, the newer meta agents, especially with Breeze being in the pool for the Grand Finals, I think that gives you a huge leg up in games like this. Yeah, we know that a lot of these high school teams also have some coaching door from the more senior staff at the schools, and that can help them to incorporate these newer meta strategies a little bit faster than potentially some other teams can. That's some great reaction time there from Boss taking down Seiyu, who we saw commit an ace earlier on Ascent. We know that these Jets are incredibly capable of popping off. And here's VCV's Takio. Managing to win out on the defense, or actually losing on the defense, maybe. <laughs> and, you know, in all this, I think it's really important to note that VCV actually ends up winning the first map. This is a reverse sweep from NQHS, which, again, mental fortitude heading into a grand finals is huge. We saw this clip 
earlier on though during the montage to, to hype up NQHS and I think it's only fair. Look at this, Sayu's going to make some plays on the jet. Doesn't successfully do it, but I appreciate the mindset of just being willing to go for it. 13 to 10, they take away Icebox. Let's see where things ended up here though. I remember, it was 2 and 0, oh, or I think 4 and 0 oh for North Quincy in terms of their overall playoff bracket heading into this. So it must have been a real bash to the confidence to lose out on that first map and feel that as the first seed, maybe there was a real threat coming their way here as, of course, we move on to split. Yeah, and on split, we ended up seeing the Viper for the first time from NQHS, which is really confidence inspiring. Having a strong split, Icebox is sort of, I don't want to say non-meta maps, but, you know, they're not getting picked in the first two, three usually. But when you're playing a best of five, you're going to get, you know, Icebox, Split, Breeze, a map that, is. yeah, exactly. It's going to throw somebody off. And having these kind of maps in your map pool for a grand final for a best of five is huge. Seeing you play a Viper on it is even more confidence inspiring. This looks fairly dominant from them. They're coming for the retake. Numbers up. Sayu getting an ace of finishes off the round. Second ace of our highlight reel. Here comes the curveball. He's managing to look away. But when you look back, everybody's aiming down at you. Boss playing here from the low ground up against Bolt, who's got a significant height advantage playing here on Heaven. Is not going to be blinded for long by that curveball. Needs to go in and win the gunfight. But with the help of Ray on the Viper from the back, manages to clear out the site. I mean, notice how many of these are retakes for NQHS. I love that they're able to do this really successfully. Playing a retake style is something that I don't get to see out of a lot of high school teams. Yet, regardless, NQHS has been able to pull it off. A lot more we're seeing rotate heavy styles trying to be proactive about things. But NQHS, willing to slow things down, willing to play retake. That's fantastic on maps like Split. It's fantastic on maps like Icebox, Haven, not to mention Breeze, which has just been added into the pools here. Right here. On that Viper, that's going to be a real sticking point for me, Dor. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing Ray play a little bit more of this hero or of this agent over the course of the entire Grand Finals because it's such an intimidating pick to go up against. Not to mention, it gives you some real attacking prowess on a map like Split, whereas normal team compositions kind of have to struggle and fight for those rounds a bit more. You see NQHS coming away with a near-perfect attacking side to try and clear things out here. And of course... They do in two to one fashion. That'll be our first quarter final of the day, but we've got more to go. <laughs> they were made to sweat for it, Dor, and they're going to be made <laughs> to sweat even harder. They're going to be sweating like it's a Texas summer when we get to our grand finals. I'm not, I, well, that said, it could be a 3 0, but I highly doubt it's going to be a 3 0 because North Quincy and Wichita are just so close together in terms of where these guys are positioned skill wise. We've got ourselves another quarter final to look at, and it is going to feature our other finalist in the Wichita Buffs. Going up against one of the most fun high school names I've seen in a minute, Heritage Corn Valley. <laughs> what, a, what a name for a high school. I love to see it. They end up getting themselves to the quarter final, so huge congratulations to them, as well uh, to the VHHS Cougars, who did not get much further than the quarterfinals. But, I mean, considering how many teams we had coming into this thing, get yourself a quarter pat on the back, man. Like, just... Just give it to yourself for getting that far. Let's take a look, though, at our other quarterfinals and get our first look at the Wichita side and what they've got to bring to the table. We're starting off here on Vine. We've got ourselves a little story going on on A side. I believe in a pistol round here. Zero to zero. And it is going to be Wichita buffs on the attack. You can see the Zumox here. In a post plant, he needs to try and find a way to defuse. And Jaden coming in from the side is exactly the covering five that's needed. Yeah, it's a very different map set for the Wichita side as opposed to what we saw earlier from NQHS. Picking Bind first, trying to take things a little more close quarters, starting things more normally. Granted, we had some ascent on their side, but this is, uh, it's very more, it's more structured. Let's put it that way, right? The teams that end up liking ascent more, like playing on the fly, they like being a little bit flexible. Teams that end up picking Bind very much want to be by the book. They want to be absolutely strict and do things the way that they want to. And that is exactly what I expect from the Wichita system. They've got fantastic players individually, but the way that Wichita as a city supports its esports, right? Everything from high school up to collegiate up to the pro level. You can tell that these students have experience playing on teams through the communication structure and the decision making as a five man crew is really what gets them through these maps. Absolutely right. There's like a legendary geographical propensity towards esports in Wichita. Definitely an area that has chosen to support this uh, this profession with a significant amount of resources 
Wichita, as you can see from a scoreboard at the moment, Last were 5-5 five, five at this point. However, trying to bait the retake or trying to bait that defuse there is Killua. However, Tyson not going to be intimidated. Manages to swing around just in time and win the gunfight. Yeah, and the Wichita Buffs will come away 5-7 in the half. They're up to start things off, though. The defensive side things a little shaky. We start things off with a 1v1. Who gets this? Oh! I can't pronounce that name, but they do get the better of it. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult to pronounce, but uh, won't be around too long. Detox here, playing in from Hooker. I I'm actually excited if we see Bind to have a look at what potential agent picks could be coming out, though, because I've been watching a little bit of uh, VCT in Korea. They love a little bit of Yaru on Bind, and also they love a good defensive Sage and just overtake Hooker with that wall. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities to run Sage nowadays, especially on uh, on a map that we haven't gotten to see yet. If we go to a little bit of a little bit of Seaside Valorant later, but we'll see whether or not any team actually wants to pick that side of Valorant. After this, WV looks to close things out. It's a close game. You know, this ends up 2-0 for Wichita Buffs, but looking at the, the match quality in general, I'm really impressed with what Heritage Corn Valley were able to put up, especially for a team that we hadn't seen on stream prior to that. Oh, no. More Dutch. <laughs> More Judge shenanigans. Not Dutch shenanigans. And, of course, the Guardian as well. Which, well, let's, let's bring it back to Bree, shall we, Dor? If we see that area, we might see some Guardian. It's got a good range to try and play along for wider sight lines. And the long ranges are offered on Bree's because, well, it doesn't have that much in the way of damage drop-off. It's got a high damage per bullet, especially when you're holding that ADS from a fairly safe location. Yeah, I mean, it's all a question of, like, do we see Breeze or not? Because it feels like by default, teams are going to kind of fall back onto the five maps that they've been playing for a while. But, I mean, it, it's like having a split. It's like having a set in your map pool earlier on in Valorant before the map changes came through. When, yes, it was a map that not a lot of people like to play, but being the team that could play that map was such a huge advantage. Oh, Dawn. Oh, Dawn. So, okay, I, Dawn's actually... Dawn was trying to do a trick there where you teleport out just as the uh, just as the lockdown pops and you don't get caught by it. But unfortunately, just missed the timing a little bit. I gotta respect going for it though. That's actually a really cool trick. That's like a like an iframe technique, I suppose. Yeah, pretty much. Right there, getting caught by the shock dart, another kill joy. Ultimate being put down. The lockdown is going to be a absolute nuisance to deal with in so many of these scenarios but here wichita playing on the defense want to try and get that retake do they have enemies in hell yes they do but tango down there lotus going to be one of these premier duelists Just on the rain up on the jet as well but we will need to look out for you want to talk about premier i think we got to talk about ken's a little bit ken's a player who we have seen a ton of and has run rampant here at HSEO, I think has a lot of potential. And if you're looking for you're looking for carry players, right? In general, in these finals, because the teams are so uh, kind of well organized on a team level, individual all of a sudden becomes absolutely huge. When normally in these close matches, it, yeah, it is down to a tactical level. But I, I think when you're talking grand finals, when you're thinking pressure is on, when you're thinking, you know, how cool can they keep it? I think that's a big question to keep our eyes on. It's interesting there, but we actually saw HCV uh, faking out with a lockdown on B in order to get that free plant onto A in the, uh, the current context of the clip we see. However, on the retake here, Wichita are going to put down their own lockdown. And the question is, will they be able to get much off of that? That's a lot of side control reclaimed right there. Who turns defuse on? Can they end it here? Oh my god, Prodigy. Chill out. Ooh. Chill out, bro. Oh, and now Zumox just copied the lockdown. <laughs> I need like the I need like the freeze frame and like the to be continued after that <laughs> Hey, I, I'll tell you what, we know what happens. Huge shout out to Heritage of Corn Valley and all of our quarterfinals. In fact, everybody who showed up for the finals week. You guys have school going on. You did a lot. You've done a fantastic job throughout HSEL. And we wouldn't be here without you, but I think it's about time that we get on to our semifinals legs. Yeah, we got ourselves a semis bracket for you guys to have a quick look at. So you know what to expect from these matches. Of course, NQHS going to be up there in the first seat up against RHS Rams. And you can see just how well our queue system works because we have exactly the seeds one through four in our top four door. I, I honestly, like, I didn't even, I have nothing to do with the queue system. You know, I'm, I'm here to cast, <laughs> to watch some good value, but I'm going to continue to flex it because it's really, really good. And these teams are, I got to say, they're, they're lucky to have something like that sorting them out. Either way, though, 
we get here, and now we get RHS Rams up against NQHS Esports. This is where things got really close. This is where we're talking, you know, multiple Radiants and Immortals on either side playing some really, really good Valorant. Yeah, this is where you can see all of the best winners. But what you can also see, really good winners, door is oh, in the Intel Winners Circle. <laughs> it's an invitational <laughs> tournament beginning on June 14th and running through the 20th, where some of the best esports teams nationwide will compete for over $50,000 in prizes, including a guaranteed $1,000 in scholarships to every participating school's esports team. Matches will be for the top teams in Overwatch, Valorant, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will be streamed live here on Twitch, on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash Generation Esports. And I believe that Dora and I might well be returning for that at some point, so who knows? Maybe it's a little bit up in the air, but, you know, we love to cast some Valorant. It'll be fun. It's like a birthday present for me. The second day, like finals, it's gonna be it's gonna be on there. I'll get to, you know, cake and whatnot and good Valorant. It's gonna be a fun day. You guys aren't gonna want to miss it. But right now, today is the fun day. Let's look at quarterfinal or rather semifinal number one between RHS and NQHS. And like like I mentioned earlier, these start going to overtime. They start getting crazy. And now we've got a best of five grand finals. I'm curious, like I think it's gonna go the the distance. I feel like it's gonna go the distance. But there's always that question mark when Wichita is playing the game that you're just like, man, Wichita could just take this thing over. But NQHS have made a really, really good name for themselves in these longer matches, especially in quarters and semis, showing that, hey, you know what? Yes, even in close games, we can lock these out. And that's a team that was 8-0 in the regular season during the Q system. And so they're not really used to losing necessarily, but they're showing us through this bracket that, hey, yes, we are absolutely capable of playing this game regardless of how close it is. Vault on the Sova is going to be incredibly integral to the overall strategy of North Quincy as well. And that makes me wonder, is this team going to opt into split where the Sova is not quite as necessary as on other maps like your Bind, like your Ascent? Because that's definitely where it seems like Vault is getting a huge amount of value for this team overall. Speaking of value, these executes again starting off on bind for NQHS is uh or rather they started off on a set last time. Starting off on bind now, I think it shows us a little bit of flexibility coming from the team, but I think we expect that from them at this point. I all the top teams are gonna have really, really deep map pools. But you can already tell just off of kind of how these are played out, the positions that players are in, the different style that NQHS and the different approach that they have coming into a map like Bind. Whereas we saw Wichita play a very execute heavy style. They were playing aggressive on the map. They were taking space and trying to hold on site afterwards. And QHS it was moving all over the place. Their post plants, they were playing inside the site, outside the site, playing using their ultimates, being very aggressive, peaking the angles. It's a, very much gonna be a battle of styles when it gets down to it. And QHS, 1-0 in the lead in the current context. PG <laughs> on the defense, getting a little bit frisky with that vandal and i wonder if we are going to see uh a preference in these teams between the vandal and the phantom we talk about breeze a lot we have to right it's the new map in the pool we're very rarely going to see the phantom on that map just because the engagement ranges have such a uh, advantage for the vandal without the damage drop off i don't see think that it it's more of a personal preference on a lot of the maps, but, you know, you talk about Ascent, if you're a little bit longer ranges, Vandal has its advantages here and there. Sayu oh, showing us exactly like why. My God, chill, dude. NQHS, though, looking for a clear lead here. I don't think they're going to find it quite as easily. It is the Rams who come away with this. It's 1-2. I want to see how long this goes, though, right? What kind of change do we see strategically from these teams when it gets into an overtime situation, when you start getting into those last rounds where you're reaching in the bottom of the barrel and all the way at the back of your strat book. Oh my God, Sayu, chill. Please, gets taken down. Nearly traded back by Zub. I'm afraid Sayu has no chill, but Peachy, he's ice cold, man. Playing in from hell there on the Omen, making sure that there wasn't going to be a defuse in this case. Playing the postmark rather close and going up against an Odin race is going to manage to get that one done. But look, North Quincy, 12 points. Rams are playing for the overtime. And I think you absolutely have to at this point. Oh my God, Mako. <laughs> yeah, for real. <gasps> Oh, Sayu, don't play with my heart like that, dude. That was incredible. And Imagine going for it as well. <laughs> Imagine. There's a world that Rams are... I mean, they start this off up, and they have to come up with this overtime to make it into that 2-1 scoreline that we know this ends in. 
Do they end it quick though? Is Ray able to hold this down? Ray's been good in clutch situations before. We saw it on Icebox prior with that 1v2. No ammo left though. And Mako chases him down. Has been solid throughout the end. And now we go to Icebox where again, it looked really, really good for NQHS earlier. That Viper pick that we talk about is just brutal to try and play against if you don't have one of your own. Oh, raised man. Just frags on through them. Now we've got a blade storm on deck from Glub here on the defense, trying to retake in a post plant scenario. Loses out on quite a few friends. Pros don't fake, but they do get scared off by Nano Swarms. <laughs> I don't think there's much time for this. NQHS with all the stall in the world. Peachy, in fact, on the, the Killjoy. Incredibly vital. I'm good. Not would finish things off here, though. The Rams, you know, silently taking control of this game, even despite the fact that they're missing out on that Viper. This defensive side has been really potent as far as the retakes have gone. Absolutely. Trying to get a little bit of a height advantage right here. Remember, they've got to worry about Having time for that defuse as well. <laughs> They're going to have plenty as they catch out Pichu there. In the one versus one for the final site control. Glob going for this long angle. This is so often held by an operator. And you can see exactly why. It's open season. And I'm good. How about you? Well, they're good at the game. Man, I got to know. What happens in this map? That NQHS is able to turn it around. Is it just a good side swap for them? Do they just come out on the defensive side that much better? Starting to look like it. Bolt coming away with two. They can't get anywhere on this site. Spikes down, though. They've got to get the retake. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, though, with four members alive. They start that score climbing back up. Keep an eye, as well, uh, on how these teams dominate the economy. It's something that we saw throughout the regular season uh, with, with teams improving and getting more and more difficult to beat because their control of the economy gets better. Oh, God. I'm good. Nobody saw him in the corner. Only got one, though, fortunately. NQHS looked to seal this thing out, though. They took this half by storm. Looking like it's going to be 13 to 9 to finish things off here. Yeah, it seemed like maybe only two rounds gained here for Rams in the second half. Oh, they want that win when we're going to put down the Viper's Pit. That was a blind wall bang with an operator, potentially. Club with a blade storm. <laughs> Not going to see Ray coming in from the side, but that's where the Viper's most deadly in their pit. And that was quite the turnaround for North Quincy, but they were made to sweat for their for their plate in this grand finals. <laughs> sweat for their piece of the pie. I'm not I'm not sure where that word was going, <laughs> sweat but for it, the pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweat for the pie, for the cake, for for whatever you get for victory. Anyways, there's another team who wants their piece of the pie. Wichita's on the other side of the bracket. Let's take a look at their semifinal match up against WHSI. Again, map order. I'm really curious to see about starting out on Haven. That's a that's a pretty new one, I would say, for a lot of these teams. Most teams end up putting it, you know, second, third, just due to how large the map is and how different it is to the kind of the standard uh, split alongside bind, alongside ascent. But regardless, it's like a good map pick for WHS regardless. Oh, what a push through sewers there from NZO, grabbing two and making sure the Wichita buffs were going to be on the back foot in a... <laughs> Five versus two scenario. Yeah, we can comfortably skip past Spot that one. Ain't no clutch a. factor that's that big right now. The Odin one enemy remaining. on B now right here. Absolutely oppressive. And well, you get someone cornered. Lotus doesn't last for long. Six for one here. So you can see why WHS may have opted to go for Haven. Or well, maybe why Wichita buffs might try and move away from Haven being an early map as well. I mean, it just goes to show how brutal it can be to quote unquote lose a pick ban, right? Mm -hmm. If WBV don't like playing this map, in theory, they shouldn't have to go to it for, for a best of three. But with having more maps in the pool, feeling like, you know, somebody has to ban Breeze as well if you don't want to play it. Or you just play the big game of chicken and then end up leaving Breeze in the pool, which is just as risky. It's going to be tough if your map pool isn't fully fleshed out to win the pick ban, but that's something to know for the, the grand finals. Since we're playing best of five, the pick ban is very different from these best of threes. The best of threes, I believe it was determined before the game uh, what maps they would be playing. And so they would play a normal pick ban order where, you know, one team picks, you know, the bans, they, they, they come in as they do. But in the grand finals, you get much less precedence in how things go. The higher seed starts off, you get one ban, and then they get to pick from the remaining maps. And that is all there's ever going to be. No map remains banned after every round. Everything reopens. You've got to be able to play every single one of these maps. Because if this thing goes to five, nothing is better than being versatile.
Look at the depth of this overtime on Haven. 14 to 14. Going in for that, what is it? Double, triple overtime, whatever you'd call it. For Valis, managing to finish that one off. But of course, not getting the full here. 15 to 14, but this looks very dangerous for Wichita buffs. And it is going to prove incredibly so as WHS managed to take an early lead in our semis heading over to Ascent. Ascent, I'm sure things change up. This is probably another map that WHS really aren't, or WBV rather, aren't huge fans of, right? Considering the playstyle that they, they usually carry with them, considering that they don't necessarily like to play the most flexible game of Valor, which, you know, it, it's not a bad thing. It's a, it's a stylistic change. Ascent is always going to be a hard map for them, it feels where you expect people to be on rotates almost constantly. Calling those rotates mid-round is absolutely vital, and the set plays lack a little bit of the punch that they do on a map like Vine. Actually, so on board here with Lotus, pops the Empress, trying to get rid of that vulnerable, gets the headshot that they were looking for with Prodigy, helping out around the other side with the Blade Storm. An aggressive lurk here from Ken's, going for that ultimate orb, were you all? Well, <laughs> what would have been a uh, an early round ultimate orb? more of a post plant scenario trying to catch that rotation coming in and well, we knew exactly where everyone would be coming from it was likely that that was uh post lockdown that had forced everyone off the site One enemy remaining. it's really interesting to see ken's playing on the killjoy as opposed to the reina as well ken's is i think every single time we've seen them play been on reina and been one of the most dominant forces within the entirety of HSCL, but now shifting over to the Killjoy, I think that might tell you something about the team structure, because while we may not see a Viper and Astra here, I do think that might tell us something about what we can get from them and what we can expect from WBV on other maps, namely Icebox, which we haven't seen from them yet today. One enemy exactly remaining. so. Fine, like you said, this one can be so much more execute heavy. Starting off with WHS on the attack, and well, it looks like... They are going to manage to do quite a good job here. Five and two at the current scoreboard. This is a free plant here as Karma tries to just win it out based on frags. Of course, control of a spike right now with the defenders. But Lotus needs to be very careful here. As this cloud burst drops, gets the shot. The Reina we were hoping for. Is that, was that a collateral? Or is that just a beautiful spray transfer? Whatever it is, Ken's knows how to shoot. Yeah, Ken's knows how to spray. Every single time you get the multi-kills. 5-5 five, five, though, this one just as close as the maps prior, which goes to really show something about WHS and how much of a fight they're able to put up. These semi-finalists deserve all the credit in the world. I think you could have put any two of them into the grand finals. Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> any two of them into the grand finals, and you end up with a pretty good match like they. But regardless, the ones that we do get is WBV and NQHS. And I think we got the best of the bunch. I think this is not necessarily not about individual skill. But about who can last under the pressure? These are high school students, man. Like they're, they're not used to being under this much weight, you know? <laughs> exactly so. Like, shows a lot of emotional maturity to be able to make that happen. Lotus is using the dismiss there for a little bit of a scout. That's some high ground at the moment. And it's just going to be spraying into CT in this post plant. There's a lot of pressure in gardens. But catch some throwing out the, uh, the guiding light, I believe. Takes out that sky in no time at all. And Lotus quick on the flick to outdo the offer. Well, the op wins down, that time. <laughs> as it uh, as it will often. WBV though, winning slightly less. The number's only three to three. The score ten to, well, probably eleven to nine now. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you want things to go well when things start. Thirteen to ten looks to be the final score as they get five members onto this site. And this is the story of how they got set to grand finals. Unless this jet has something to say about it. Well, one jet with a blade storm. You can never count them out, but both Lotus and Con are playing from the back of sight. They take for double peak and they get the headshot to secure their place in our grand finals door. And no surprise they got there. And the, the, the grand final spot. It's nice. It's good. Semi-finals, hats off to everybody who ended up getting there. But you know what's just as important as winning this whole thing like this? Showing up in the top five the most times. Because <laughs> it seems to be the most coveted thing. It's what everybody comes. We get more viewers for the for the top five because everyone wants to know if they got into it. So let's find out who our top five were for the quarters and semis. You may not have won the whole thing or won the whole thing yet, but you can show up and get your last shot at being on stream here. It's time to go backpacking and Corvallis is going to be first in line here playing with the pistol. The classic on the retake. Not phased at all as they make themselves a quick scouting maneuver. 
They know exactly where their enemy is. Fake for the defuse. Ken's has to check. And Ken's dies for the trouble. A way to keep it cool. Number four, though. A little drum roll going. It's Mako coming in for the fourth play. Where does it start? Okay. Starts out with the Vandal. Oh, this is that spray down. That brutal three piece. Oh my god. Rams just don't chill. And Mako goes out with the bang. What a beautiful play from the Ermin, making sure that that rifle was worth it. Here's Lotus, one of our premier duelists here on Haven, coming in from the side with the Spectre. You know, that's exactly where the Jet wants to be. Transfer the spray from one to the other, swap over to the Classic, get themselves. Not the killing blow, but enough damage onto the Phoenix to make it worth their while. I gotta say, multi-sprays with the Spectre is always impressive, but what's more impressive is number two in Glob, and my god, this Marshall just goes to town, gets one, watch this. One enemy. Oh! Oh, there we go. Nasty. Bring out the frenzy. <laughs> Give it the 4K. What a play from Glub. But How do you top that? One? It's raised. All right. We got to beat out that Marshall play somehow. Let's take a look so at what our observers chose for number one. So much. Bring him down two with the Spectre. That is just a gross play. Three. The transfer on to another. Oh, my God. No chill. How many 4Ks? How many spray downs can we get in one top five? I look, we, we've had top fives every single week going in. I think that was clearly the best one. No, that, no shot at any other week. There were so many skilled plays in there, and they were all at the top level of Valorant. No plays that happened just because someone else dropped the ball. But we are on the ball. We're moving towards our grand final. So let's have one last look at our bracket to see how we got to the precipice of the culmination of our competition. Plays for crown need to be made here by North Quincy, and by Wichita Buffs Varsity. Rams and WHS, they were defeated on their way here. Blood has been spilled to generate this grand finals door. There's nothing left to it like that but to do it. We got grand finals coming up in just a bit, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned after this break. Grand finals, come on.
Welcome to the HSEL Nationals. It is an amazing day for Overwatch. We are looking forward to seeing the matchup today as we look to try and again see which one of these teams is going to go into the opportunity to try and claim that prize pool. There's kids that are in my program that would walk around and have nobody at school to talk to. And now those same kids have like a great group of friends. They're happier. Their parents are ecstatic. Why wouldn't you want to give that to a group of kids that don't have it just because you don't understand it? Okay, yes, they're playing video games, but you gotta look past that and also see why are they playing it and what are they doing with it? There's not a lot of knowledge about gamers out there, you know, so people just don't know what they don't know. Really collaborative, like a sport. I mean, it is a sport. I mean, it's new that I think it's hard for people to understand that it's a sport. They have to develop teamwork like any other physical game does. We gotta get rolling. This is where it becomes big time. We've been working all year for this. SLP on three. One, two, three, SLP! SLP. Thank you so very much for all of you who have tuned in and watched the HSEL Nationals. The five map pool today will be Hollywood, Kings Row, Nepal, Lijong Tower, and Oasis. I mean, it's interesting to see just how many schools there are this year and how many schools you're beating out to be in the top eight. It's insane. Joseph is our youngest. He's 17. He was diagnosed with autism at age four. Not an excuse. He's still Joseph. Everybody is welcome. You want to come play esports for me? Come play for me. That is the mentality that we have in esports. All right, here we go. St. Louis Park looking for that repeat national title. The only number one seeds left in the tournament. No kid does drop. Tosi is now on. Now he's feeling it. Get these shots, Tosi. Now he's feeling it. Boom. The point of this is for people to find a place where they belong, make friends, learn discipline, learn teamwork, learn reaction to setbacks. Triple kill coming out in favor of SLP as they now are starting to look to turn it around. Frank, I got you, I got you. Nice job here, you're popping. Another solid hold here with an entire team kill for SLP. When he plays, he wins. To see if they can keep it into overtime, and that's not going to be enough. That will be SLP claiming the first three victories here. Best of five, and they will be going into the finals. Well, we move on. All right, we're out of hype videos, we're out of ads, we're out of highlight reels, we're out of top fives. It's grand finals time. It's a best of five to see who comes away with that sweet, sweet $5,000 in scholarships. That's right, 1,000 fat buckarooskies for each of the players on these team. The youngsters are doing it big in the high school esports league, and only one team gets to win it all. Okay, Dawn. I get what you're saying, but there is one more ad. <laughs> <laughs> Just one cheeky little ad for <sighs> the wonderful people over That's at fine. NASEF, because HSEL is excited to join forces with NASEF and North America Scholastic Esports Federation. They provide uh, free scholastic esports programs to help you learn how to turn your love for esports into an awesome career. Students can participate in free tournaments, scrims, and esports based challenges. Free resources are available for educators to lead scholastic esports programs in and out of the classroom so you can game, grow, learn, and lead with NACEF and create your free esports club today. You can start doing that by visiting NACEF. N A S E F dot org. Yeah, check it out. Start an esports club at your school. Seriously, get it going. It is a fantastic bit of time, a great way to grow and learn some more. But now there's no more going to be done, no more learning. Grand final. Let's talk <laughs> about these teams for a second because we spoke about it during the, the highlight reels and the, the quarterfinals and semifinals, what we expected to see. But they're very dichotomous when it comes to the play styles that they have. NQHS looks very flexible in their play style. On the other side, though, Wichita has been really really solid when it comes to those set plays when it comes to everything around it's, it's not to say that they don't know how to play flexibly how they don't know how to rotate or play on maps like you know haven icebox or where you're going to be moving around a bit more but it does go to tell you that these map pick bands are going to be pretty interesting yeah wichita in particular we saw in our semi-finals vod fared rather poorly 
on Haven versus, uh, I think it was uh, another Wichita school, maybe they were up against one of the W schools. <laughs> and uh, West High, thank you very much, production. And maybe they were trying to avoid that as one of the earlier rounds. And like you said, they're a little bit stronger on the set plays. So maybe earlier on in the series, we might actually see a little bit more power come out of these set plays to get potentially early plants or maybe some very well-established retakes onto perhaps a, a team that might take a little bit longer to warm up in Quincy as they try to play flexibly. You're, you might be a little bit less drilled in how you want to manage those retake angles, how you want to manage your post plants, maybe how you want to get onto the site in the first place, depending on who starts off on the attack and who starts off defending but thing is when you can play that flexibly once you've seen a lot of the playbook of wichita are you going to be able to manage that a little bit more effectively well i, I think we start off the series in a really great way let's talk about map pick ban and how it plays out it's very different from the best of threes that we had in quarters and semi-finals here in the grand finals it is one team gets to ban one map and the other team gets to pick a map and that happens every single map until we run out of maps to play or somebody <laughs> wins this series which means that it's really hard to ban out more than you can get like one perma ban map maybe two at best i'm really curious to see how the teams adapt to that especially given their their very stylistic differences i think this gives a huge opportunity for us to go to five because you know, okay, we start off, the higher seed gets to pick, and I think the, the first round is a very good example of how this can go. It starts off with Wichita trying to ban away Breeze. New map, they don't know how to play it, they don't want to play it, they want nothing to do with it. Say, okay, we get that out of here, but that leaves all five maps open to the other side, and NQHS, we know they loved playing Icebox. They look super good with the Viper, and there's nothing stopping them from taking exactly the map they want. So these teams are going to have really great map picks, and then if Wichita end up losing on Icebox, which again, we haven't seen them play yet. We don't know if they have a Viper. Well, then all of a sudden the tables are turned and they have a huge advantage in being able to pick exactly the map that they want because there's only one ban on the board for NQHS. So this should optimize itself for a pretty long series. Yeah, we're going to get into Icebox as soon as possible. Don't you worry. But we've also got to talk about what Breeze means when you're looking at a seed one and a seed two going up against each other. Evidently, from the 8 0 score lines these guys had in our Q system, they're incredibly confident in just playing, for the purposes of this conversation, what we would call vanilla Valorant, where it doesn't involve Breeze, which was only unlocked for the playoffs, of course, just due to it <laughs> moving into the game itself. So there's the idea that we can play the other five maps that are in the pool, right? We know we can play them well. We haven't dropped a series yet. We have proven ourselves to be reliable competitors. So maybe both teams think that way, and neither of them wants to go to Breeze. But at the same time, maybe coming into this Grand Finals, you know that there's the potential that you could find yourself up against the wall. You may want to try and throw, a, throw out a curveball that the enemy might not be so well prepared for, so maybe you've been scrimming a little bit more Breeze. Yeah, and I honestly, here, here's my early call. I think if any team actually ends up bringing out the Breeze, although they banned it, I would not be surprised if it ended up being Wichita. It For them, it's kind of a difference maker because they were rocky on Haven. Icebox is clearly an NQHS favorite map. And then you're talking about Split where they can also pull out the Viper and look incredibly strong. So if there's a team that needs to break this up and kind of pull one of those maps out of the five map rotation that we have for, for a best of five grand finals, it would be Wichita. But at the same time, Breeze is a huge map as well where Viper it just runs rampant. So like this is... Honestly, a really tough map pool for Wichita in general. Let's see what they can get done, though. Let's just get right into our grand finals. Like we said, it starts off on Icebox, and it is nothing but Viper to be seen from NQHS. I'm really, really curious to see, though, what we get out of Wichita. Yeah, we highlighted Ray earlier from NQHS as one of the people we'd expect to be playing that Viper, but straight away. You know that Sayu is going to be locking the jet. That's just who Sayu is. To their very core, Sayu is that explosive burst movement duelist. Question is, does Bolt opt for the Sova here or no. the Sage? I think it's going to be the Sage. As much as I, I like the Sova here, I think the Sage offers a lot to the table. The Jet as well is going to give you some really interesting off angles that you can play that you normally wouldn't really have access to. Killjoy, the setups are numerous here. You can shift it out for a few agents actually, in these kind of situations. But I would assume Peachy's going to stay on kind of what is their signature agent. On the other side, though, a uh, bit of a surprise in the shift up that no uh, Viper is going to be here that we see at least 
forgetting things for Wichita buffs. Instead, they're sticking to what they know. Ken's, again, not playing the Reyna. I, I think this might have something to do with Ken's just having a really flexible agent pool and then mm -hmm. Lotus being more comfortable on the Reyna than anything else. So that just kind of gives you a greater overall depth of play as opposed to focusing it on one person, which, yes, I, I think Ken's is pretty and arguably a monster on the Reyna, but maybe having that flexibility is something that Wichita are really looking for, especially on these maps like Icebox, where you can have very specific play styles. Yeah, well, we have seen some frag heavy players. I believe uh, Scream of Team Liquid uh, comes to mind who have gone over to the Sage, I think, from that sort of duelist role uh, on certain maps because they just believe that the Sage utility with the wall in particular is so important and also providing a little bit more sustainability to your team, which makes skirmishing slightly more viable, especially in pistol rounds to have that heal because the time to kill is so much longer, Dor. We're going to be starting off with North Quinta here on the attack. So how are they going to manage to execute this one? How are they going to use their Viper Wall to potentially bisect the site? And how will they play around it in Pug's Plant if we get that far? This is where I'm a little bit worried for WBV. The defensive side is certainly going to be rougher than the attacking side for them. Playing into this Viper, the Omen is not going to be able to shut too much down, right? You've got two smokes mm -hmm. in a blind and like do your best to spread those across the map. But the map's huge. Right? You can only cover so much square footage of this. It's going to be down to your Sova to really spot things out early alongside your Jet, who can do a bit of information gathering in her own right. But other than that, you're going to be flying blind for most of these. And NQHS, with this Viper, are going to have some really, really aggressive executes that they can pull out that it's very unlikely Wichita are able to spot out every single time. Going well, up that secondary smoke after a poison orb though, and already that recon bolt is going to ping Seiyu. So going for the entry here, obviously doesn't have time to pick up this orb right now, but they're just going to be moving straight in. Move through the clouds burst, looking for the ghost fire. They are going to take out their counterpart here in Prodigy. Peachy on the other side is getting even more done, and Seiyu's reign of terror is not done yet. There's going to be so much vision taken away by that wall, but Kens keeps their cool and takes out that primary duelist here. But we are post-plant now, Dor. Oh, and even once you get here, I mean, tough 1v3. Dawn might be able to slip through here. Oh, that's cheeky. That's cheeky. Oh, no. No. Oh, just a couple missed opportunities. But yeah, so I think cops. that seals out the 3v1. Do they know that they can get? I don't think they even know they can get behind this wall. And they're just Maybe like, how, how, they're just like, how did Dawn get over there? Do we not hear him drop or something? Oh, passing away. Question is, will Dawn hit the shot? Seems like not. <laughs> going for right ones of head, but Can't miss I from think there. it might be a little bit late for the... Uh... But the diffuse right here drops into a nano swarm and I think a snake bite as well. <laughs> Just all of that utility was placed on top of the spike when they knew that it was either stick with the fuse or lose for the omen. And unfortunately for Dawn, it was a lost round. And now North Quincy going to be able to move forward with their Spectre round. It's no problem for them. Let's see if they can capitalize on the second here, though, of course. Key numbers we're looking for to keep three members alive with your buy coming through. WBV not opting for any sort of force. They're not a team that likes to force all that often, nor are they really in situations where they have to <laughs> more often than not. But see if the sheriffs can get something done here. Spread out. Same split that we saw last time. No sort of lean towards one side or the other. Just a, a little bit of cheeky play from WBV, but losing a player early now. Prodigy's gone. There's going to be very little to actually stop these specters from coming in unless somebody can hit some miracle shots, but doesn't look like it's happening. So he's claimed so much space here. Even the sting is going to be part of this. Once again, Dawn is the only one who is left having played on that B site thus far. Won't win for long range duel against the Spectre and Seiyu. What a performance from him so far. Already five out of six towards that Blade Storm. And here on the save round, we could see a world where Seiyu can try and make a play for the Operator in round four. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it is Sayu, right? To, to start things off, but... <laughs> it's, a, it's just Sayu thing. Yeah, exactly. You just know that... This is the epitome of, like, if your Jet doesn't have the most confidence on your team, then they're not really someone you want playing Jet. Sayu, that's not, that's not a problem at all. <laughs> but a slight shift on the defensive side, so we're playing in mid, as opposed to over on the A side. I love that they're shifting him around, trying to keep pressure across the map, and again, the information gathering is the most important part of the game here for WBV, so... How well the Sova starts off at the beginning of every round is critical. Because if you don't spot out where this Viper is, you are just going to get crushed by the Executes every single time they come through. And yeah, there's a little bit of information there from Prodigy, which is nice to have. But the default spread from NQHS doesn't really give anything away.
yeah speaking of spotting out the viper no wall has been deployed so far so not entirely yeah, sure where that bad wants to execute. You can see that they are going to be on B. Backing up Sayu, who's already used that Blade Storm. Prodigy has fallen elsewhere. Wow. And Sayu with the knife snipe across point B. There's dual pressure coming in right now because Raynor is pushing up into A. The spike yet to be planted. It's with the Sage right now. They might try and run it up through mid here, but they're going to have to move through the smokes that have been placed down by the Omen. Still, the trailblazing from the Viper proving too much, and we won't even get a plant because everybody's dead in advance i really like what i saw there from wichita for just a second right saying hey you know what we're out of information gathering we don't have a drone we're out of the sonic darts we don't have really many ways of peeking you prodigy's out of dashes like there, there's no information that wbv is going to get and they said hey you know what we don't have that but what we can do is try and push you they did that got one and then things got shaky they're a little bit of indecision moving in and out and it ended up losing the round because of that indecision. But the, the idea, the plan itself of trying to push after you've lost all of your information gathering shows that they do understand their composition and more importantly, understand the composition that they're playing into. Dawn knows is at a significant weapon disadvantage here. The Phantom has been decided upon. Many rifles in the hands of North Quincy and it's basically sheriffs and ghosts for Wichita at this point. They're going to be rushing straight onto point. They're looking for a good execute here. Down goes for one and the plant will likely come soon after. It's obfuscated by that wall, but look who's up on top. Ken's was there, but not for long. Say you with the covering fire to make sure that plant can be secured. Dawn is poking away with a ghost, but you know the damage is not going to be enough. You've got to try and make that play. You've got to try and take some of these rifles out of circulation, do the damage to the economy, but it's a flawless victory from NQS. And it's flawless in terms of rounds so far as well, Dawn. I gotta say, that was just a gorgeous anti-eco. Remember, two of these rounds have been anti-eco, right? Second round, fourth round, they won third. It's kind of expected that it ends up going that way with those two rounds in particular. But the fact that NQHS have won the critical rounds of round one and three are what's really, really impressive here. They won down in weaponry on round three, and they won the pistol on round one. And now they get to live in the spoils of that. All these players have miniature trust funds in their pocket, not to mention the potential scholarships <laughs> they might get later. And QHS is looking pretty good for this. The Empress as well looks to make the difference here. Sayu finding an early pick on a Prodigy as well. Just cracks open this A site. Now the wall is going to deny anyone else from trying to enter in. Lotus up on this high ground though. Does put a bit of a wrench into the mix. That's the second time that's happened to Prodigy. But it's a little bit better in terms of trades for Wichita right here. It's three versus two. Bolt trying to play upon the high ground, and that spike will be planted. The Viper's still in action. Maybe they could look for some kind of Viper's pit here, but they can't get the kill to get that last orb. Going to be an easy defuse, and finally, Wichita place themselves upon the board. They're going to give over that defuse to make sure they're a little bit closer to the Hunter's Fury. That's got to feel pretty good as well for Wichita. Just not letting it too out of hand is already, like, not good. Uh, but you start building your way back. You capitalized on a weapon round. You pull out of it with an operator as well to toss on a prodigy. They will be perfectly fine feeling after that. One more round and they get to a relatively even economic state. There, there's no big problems here. Again, though, compositionally, you are missing out by not having a Viper. And I think there's honestly not much arguments you had over that anymore. I think Viper is just the best pick here. And not being able to play it does put WBV at a bit of a disadvantage, but clearly... They've managed to find their way around. That does probably connect the shot. Absolutely great stuff with the operator. And now smoke to back it up. Great play from the Omen as well. Repositioning the jet. Now to the other side of the map. Prodigy should be rotating somewhere here. Maybe peeking that mid area. I think is the best opportunity for the jet realistically. But they've locked him into one side of the map. Peachy breaks him out though. Push from Tyson. Might cut off the rotate coming through the back though. There's very little space for the attackers to work with. They're not going to be able to get into great post playing positions here. This is, yes, they have the spike down, but it's not what they want out of it. That's going to be one down onto Ray looking for more, but the two players have been bisected away. Ray simply being corralled into the bullets of Ken's. Doesn't try and play on top of the wall this time. Has to deal with an Anno Swarm. That means getting out of dodge real fast. But remember, they still have the capacity to heal. Bolt sends out the slow orb looking for some kind of follow up. They're going to have to do it themselves, but Tyson strikes on back. Everyone else is going to fall on down, and the deep fuse is going to come through. Well, the lockdown's also going to be gone. And just taking a free tactical pause here while they've got some time before the full defuse come through. Wichita, they've started building up some momentum for themselves here, but they have lost out on that operator that they invested no, they didn't. heavily in. Uh -huh. Oh, Dawn picked it up. Yep. I thought it might have been a little bit too far away, but... That's, no. what, they, uh, that's what they delayed the spike for. 
Ah, oh, yeah. That was, that was actually really, really good by them. Get it back in the hands of Prodigy, who looks more comfortable on the operator than anything else, right? You've got the Jet players mm -hmm. that are, you know, rifle and knives and just want to get in there, but everyone's fine. You know, Prodigy, one in six. The score line's not great, but the operator shot honestly looked beautiful on the last round. So I, uh, I don't have my, I don't have any real doubts that they'll be able to get something done with the expensive hand cannon in their, uh, in their mitts, so to speak. And I think it definitely changes the pace of the game for WEV. You can see just how apprehensively NQHS are approaching this. So they didn't see the operator on the first angle, so they're pretty sure it's not here on B. Now, for them, it's about getting onto the site quickly before that operator gets an opportunity to get into the right position to, to really hit some shots. Dawn with potentially a nasty angle here. See Seiyu up on the high ground. Will they take the challenge? Well, won't get a chance because Sayu's managed to drop on down. They've lost Peachy now, and that Leer is going to obfuscate vision for so many. Prodigy trying to play from afar, and they will find Bolt with that Operator. Draw the Bolt back and try again, but East on the flank right here catches out Kens. No more healing, no more sustainability. Suddenly, it's going to be Ray who stands alone on this Viper. Has the spike in hand, but bullets in head. Another one up and one closer to tying things, but uh, I mean the economy's already been flipped kind of on its head. Peachy somehow has 6k credit alongside East, but <laughs> NQHS are definitely not feeling comfortable since this operator has come on the board. Prodigy's made an impact with it every single time they pull the trigger. Lotus as well has been playing much more forward positions trying to stop these executes before they happen or playing cheeky angles that the Viper wall can't really cover, right? We saw it happen over on the A site when they started turning the game around when they got their first round up on the board playing high up. Again, where the wall is not going to be really covering. And now Prodigy looks to play aggressively. Oh, just misses the rope, unfortunately. <laughs> but no regardless of, uh, of whether or not that connects, the Sonic Dart did, which prompts the third person to rotate over here. You can see the Sova floating around alongside the Reyna and the Jet. They're entirely ready for the A take because that's a fake wall over towards B. And now with Lotus down, that should be the go button for them to get over here. Prodigy's in position. The wall is not blocking. This could be a collat. No, Peachy, fortunately, the only one to go down. Close to being a collateral right there. Prodigy actually updrafts into the ceiling. The ore's up above them, so their verticality is limited. The plant cannot be completed as Ray shifts position here. Still, you've got to worry about Sayu, and Dawn's going to take care of that for his old buddy. Ken's up top. Will Prodigy descend into the Viper's pit with the Bladestorm? We believe that they will. Trying to get that rifle here because they can't play out with the Operator at this close range. East and Ray are keeping themselves alive right here. The wall will grant some verticality to keep what Kens from drowning the, the poison. They're looking for a little bit more, but they're only at 1 HP and Ray's more than happy to take it away with a headshot from the Vandal. It would do a lot more damage than that, but that is going to be the control of this map. Once again claimed by North Quincy. But guess what? Prodigy's been saving up the pennies. He's able to get another operator. Yeah, they crack open the bank, and now they've got another operator. That wall play from Kent was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. But, hey, I, I can't <laughs> knock it. It worked. <laughs> uh, more power to you. But wasn't able to get two. Like you said, uh, momentum is back towards NQHS, but the economy is very, very much even for both sides. It was an expensive round for both teams. And whoever wins this gets a, gets a bonus round on top of it, which both teams, I think, would love at this point. When you're just right near the half, they have to sense this A-take coming, though. Get that Sage in there to help out. They've already got three members to stop this from going through, but that Sova's going to be pretty much null and void because of the Viper's wall. Yeah, this time, no fakey wall is going to be placed on A, but look at this. They're rotating out, quickly shifting backwards. It might be the Sage who has first contact here. We'll be able to catch a glimpse of that Seiyu Jet, and they managed to win out the duel with Seiyu. That's so important to do. Five versus six now. And remember, that Sage can heal themselves up. The wall will be broken down before it is fully formed. Through oh! the Radiant Eye box. Kenz has no mercy. This is brutal. NQHS, they don't have the Viper's Wall. Rotating when you have a Viper on your team is incredibly difficult if you've already committed utility to the one side of the map. They'll pull back around, head towards A, but now you're 2v4. Uh, this does bring to bring to light a bit of an interesting option that they have in future rounds to throw up a fake wall at B, pressure down on A, and then go back towards B. But that's a tale for another day. We got to worry about this operator and Prodigy still going to work with it. Oh, you won't be able to heal up the, the cataclysmically low Prodigy right now, but there's going to be more than enough covering fire coming through from Lotus and Vasova as Prodigy just going to keep their distance right here. Wants to keep a hold of this weapon, of course. Going to try and play up high. There could be a wraparound here if they know where Ray is and they're making plenty of noise. Doesn't look in the right direction as Prodigy was high 
playing a very high angle, which made them hard to spot at a glance with a jiggle. And, well, this could be some economic disaster in future rounds here for North Quincy. I mean, they're one away from breaking. I think they go for it here. It, absolutely, they should. They've also got, I believe, yep, Jedelt online for Seiyu. Could pop off, could do something crazy, but right now, I mean, the player to watch is just Prodigy, right? It may not be multi-frags. It may not be the flashiest stuff, but really, really good positioning with this operator has given WBV a new life on this map that, again, we were worried they were going to have anything going for them on because they lack that viper player but it doesn't matter they've got an operator player and and sova has not been able to to match it so it's far place on a lotus Bye gonna now. have to get away real quick right here needs to reach the edge of that killjoy area of effect so he's going to be trying to hunt for anyone who's detained but is going to be given the information that no one was a victim no updrafts remaining, so could not find a good angle there. Oh, timing. Onto their counterpart. Still. Oh, that was not the reaction speed they wanted. But wait, they'll just put it through them anyway. It's okay. I'll miss you. I'll kill your buddy. And now it's two versus one. But can Dawn do it? They need to deal here with the potential to try and get a defuse. They're going to stick it for the first half. Will they he, 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 he's the fine. Second? He's fine. He's got it. He got it! He got the defuse. The bar broke for a second. I'm not sure oh what happened there. Oh my goodness. Esports ready game, but regardless. Pros don't fake. Way to go, Dawn. The bravery there. Maybe bottom in frags at the moment, but in our heart, what a professional play. Realizing where PG was going to be playing that and sticking it out for the full defuse. A huge clutch right here. Still, both teams are going to be able to have some rifles, but it's a very battered economy. Half by here from North Quincy. A couple of sheriffs to play with. They want to loot some guns. I mean, whew, best of luck to you. You got to get past Prodigy first. Now dashes away. It's not these angles that you're worried about, though. It's the ones that you have to push into afterwards. Sayu does have a hero vandal, if if anything, is going to make this work. Does turn it around, trying to bait some rotates in, but with the mid control given over by the Reyna, they'll spot out anything going through there early. Silva, love this push up as well. Grabs the ult toward, backs away. Has the Hunter's Fury now for when they push back in. It's very likely that they get a pick off that, just given the choke points that you have to push through here on A. Could opt to hold it though, given that they've already got a man advantage and they know they've got the weapons going their way as well. Sayu here, tagged by that owl drone. No time to pull that one out. Decent now going to send in the second amount of recon. This is going to make it very easy to try and spot out an early Oh, operator. no. Hunter's Fury is going to do some damage, but Prodigy and Ken's got there first. The final killing blow onto Peachy will be delivered to Tyson. And now Ray with the Sheriff has no friends, has no primary weapon. And well, won't get a spike plant either as we head into the last round of the half door. This is neck and neck and a far fling from a four and over that we felt in round five. I mean, like I said, the operators just changed the name of the game entirely. Nobody has been able to match Prodigy yet. And now WBV doubled down. Oh my God. Just going for the second <laughs> operator on Kent. I mean, why not? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now you cover mid. Like no one's been able to get past it yet. The retakes, sure, have been a little bit shaky out of WBV, but I, I think they're just trying to back up what they're good at. They come out of this half, 7-5. That's fantastic for the Wichita side. Watch say you here. Will they take the peak? We likely don't know. They're up against an operator. It's mostly been played on B long. Ooh. Eason gets the first though. On to East. Great start from the Sova here. And now it's time to see if there are any friends who were lurking about. But Ray's going to stay in a quite subdued position for now. Resurrection. Might as well invest it. You can't take it through to the second half. There it is from Prodigy. I mean, it's just different. It's just it's different. Dirty. And there, oh, there's the backup up. Oh, Sayu just got done so dirty. Sayu's like, okay, Prodigy's over here. I'm going to peek him. I'm going to beat. I'm going to show this guy who's the boss on the operator. And he just gets shot in the side of the head by a stage with a random operator. Like, that's the last thing you're expecting from that position. Oh, now, Lotus, on the same you. high ground they started this comeback with, is going to end the half up 7-5. to five. What an incredible turnaround for WBV. Uh, I feel like Peachy might have been able to get that in a different world. Ray here playing for the classic with the uh, with the half shield. It's an interesting loadout here for the Viper. Remember that that wall and that poison orb can be so incredibly influential in the early pistol rounds, where the time to kill is a lot higher. 
taking away 50 HP with something like uh, like your toxic screen, that can do a lot towards guaranteeing a faster kill. Yeah, I mean, it's only 30 now, but uh, it's still there. And it matters mm. enough in rounds like these. I like the classic buy, but you're talking about long ranges on Icebox as well. So Ray's going to have to stick pretty close to the utility if they want to make this work. But what I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the game about that was the hard half for WBV. That was supposed to be the difficult one because they had such a lack of information. Now on their attacking side, it's going to be much easier to figure out what they're moving into using that Sova drone. Say, hey, are we going into the Viper? Or are we going into something more like a Killjoy? What utility are we expecting to play into? And they're going to be able to deal with it much more effectively because of all the attacking utility that they have between the Reyna or, and the Jet as well, backing it up. Well, we won't be able to break through that stage wall, so Tyson's going to be able to get the plant out for free right here. But still, Dawn on top. Plenty of room to work with. Tyson takes that one down. Tyson may be suffering from decay, but it's the enemy team who are falling apart. Molecule by molecule, player by player. And Wichita, they have found their groove. And like you said, they had all the information they needed to get that execute done. What they really need to do is just continue to leverage the executes that they have with the Omen. Right on the defensive side, he struggles a lot to shut down plays. Again, the the smoke covers are only so good uh, on the defensive side. You can only cover so much space with them. The blinds don't really catch anything on the attacking side. It's basically the polar opposite. It becomes much more useful. You're fighting in much closer quarters, and you can section things off much more effectively. I want to see him continue to execute. They bring things over to A side here. They've got a weapon advantage. There's no real stack from NQHS either, which means that this Killjoy and Jet have got to do a lot of work if they want to win this round. Anything bought here by NQHS, possibly some utility and a shorty. There's for shorty, and it's gone by Sayu. Tisa manages to get a headshot there, but not before suffering quite a bit of damage. Could be vulnerable. Further on, but Prodigy manages to outdoor Peachy right here. Will claim the high ground. The spike may well be planted, and the shock dart won't get too much, but Ray creeping around the back will be caught out by Dawn. Ga managing to get two from this high ground, realizing the tempo of North Quincy and stomping upon it gorgeous round by wvv as well right the tempo they caught on to but they also caught on to the rotate leaving one man back it was dawn locking up the back line and they've done a fantastic job of not just taking map control but maintaining the map control that they have not moving all five players into one spot playing close quarters post plants on site where that uh where all of a sudden the viper becomes much more viable and much more dangerous in sectioning players off no they are maintaining full map control wbv that at the beginning of this game to now have i don't want to i don't even think they've changed that much but i think they figured out how to force nqhs to play their game as opposed to the other way around nqhs has opportunities to leverage his viper a little bit more but i think a lot of those are now gone now the attacking half is gone prodigy has opted into the marshal here looking to channel the same energy that the operator bought although a little bit earlier in the game of course yeah, let's try and challenge out all the way through mid. No one's going to be peeking there at the moment, but this is valuable information gained by Prodigy and, of course, the information that, you know what? The safe just used our wall right there. Love this default from WBV as well. And QHS don't really have anything to push with. There, right? If anything, maybe the jet gets aggressive here and there, but you're not expecting her to push behind you. And it's the same push we see from last time. Waiting to throw out the omen smokes. There they go, but they leave the jet behind. Prodigy now at the marshal is going to be able to hold the backside of this push, but they haven't taken out anybody on site. Sayu pushes in, gets a bullet inside of the head. Lotus, fantastic job locking down the position, pushing through the smoke. So NQHS just don't stop trying to go for this one, but they've lost a lot of members for it. It's now Prodigy versus the Viper. Decides to just back away. So you get the best of both worlds here. His bolt comes in from up top, evens up the numbers for just a moment, turns it into a 1v2 but with low HP. This is not looking too good. Mike's been planted as well. Dawn is slowly approaching from the right-hand side, and Lotus is playing it quite far out. There we go. Target acquired. Stole away a phantom. And we'll be using that to put down the enemy. That was a buy round there from North Quincy. It's going to be a ramshackle operation here, Door And, well, they can't really afford to be ramshackle at this point. It's 10 and 5. They are running out of lifelines. I mean... It you don't have to play for overtime. You could play to try and stop them at 11, which I think is the game plan here for NQHS. Though seeing Sayu buy up to a Marshall kind of screams the opposite. These players are going relatively low. I don't think the is loss that bonus is... Marshall? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're playing to make plays and then go for maybe a force buy on the next round to try and make something of this. PG opens it up. Well, that's a good look for the defenders. It's a good start. We'll need to go and get healed up by Bolt, who has managed to arrive in time. 
Prodigy going to be resurrected right here and we'll have access to their gun because they died a little bit too deep to have that gun looted away. So you're going to be playing this same cheeky angle here, but will WBV maintain that much presence on A? For now, it's just Serena. A lot of noise is going to be made down mid at the moment, and that's going to force out some rotations and some curiosity from North Quincy. Very interesting defense for NQHS. Very much up their alley with how flexible they've been playing. You see the Sage moving across the map. Killjoy doing the exact same. They get an early no oh, that it's over there, but they've been faked out. The rotates have been baited in their own play. No one's being there. used against them. WV now on the other side of the map, man. Did you guys see them? It's a it's a tough call. Nobody nobody saw them anywhere over there. I'll give you that much. Now popping Molly's on the site, but oh, Ken's that was unnecessary. But anyways. The ant in his pants, be damned. Pulling off shots now. It's a Lotus holding down the site. And they've got a lot of utility for this post plan. Really, the Omen should have a smoke to try and get in here. Lotus still holding the angle. Apparently, is all you need. Lotus for Radiant player doing so much right here. Ray's going in, run and gun with the Spectre. Manages to loot themselves a Phantom now. Very dangerous to try and deal with, but only 5 HP. Peachy looking for maybe an arrogant peek from one of the defending members of Wichita. And right now, Ray's going to be hiding out behind that Sage Wall. Peachy managed to find themselves a Vandal. They're going to go for the defuse, but guess oh, what? They won't last wow. long. Tyson keeps his cool, gets the double kill. One was a wall bang, and that's going to be 11 here for WBV. They need to be stopped here by North Quincy. That was beautifully played by Tyson. Read the player underneath him, held, held the trigger. Understood, I can get this shot on the defuse first. I can buy time to make this person commit more heavily, get underneath me, force a worse angle for them. In these clutch situations, WBB have been nothing but sensational at locking out these rounds. I, I honestly, like, I can dote over this Wichita team all day. I have very few complaints with their play right now. I was a little worried about, yes, they don't have a Viper player. They're a little bit behind the curve as far as meta goes. But when it comes to what they're playing, they have it fleshed out fully. And QHS have got to find a way around these longer sight lines. Or maybe just a different map pick next time. But for now, Icebox isn't over yet. Sai playing a little tricky angle right here. Trying to hope that they might find someone low on health. But the spray doesn't connect anywhere. That is going to be the spike planted as well. Likely behind for ready cover of the Sage Wall. Dawn's already taken out that Sentinel. Sentinel, PG won't be available and neither will their ult. Prodigy is found from the back by Ray. Doesn't have that much fuel left, but of course it will be taken very soon. East takes out their counterpart and that's going to be yet another one. This Rainer has been a little bit quiet over the course of Icebox and Lord Easton's going to make sure they're going to be quiet for a while longer. Sticking with the fuse. That's going to be a well done play by Bolt on the Sage. And they get the exit frag there onto Tyson to make sure that they cannot maintain that rifle. You said, Dor, that they needed to stop them at 11. Seems like that was the plan for North Quincy. Yeah, I mean, it's their only opportunity to do so. I got to say, that was actually one of the shakiest rounds I've seen in a hot minute from WBV. They didn't take great post plant positions. They all end up out that side. And then after that, they didn't double peek a single time. It was one person peeking into two for every single one of those frags all the way down into the last one, which is uncharacteristic. It's just, it's, there's still something to be said. There's openings here for NQHS to get their foot in the door, but they got to do it. God knows how many times in a row. Saw you playing an off angle up here, though. Could catch off Prodigy. There's no way you're ready for this. Nope. Prodigy down. Good job starting off the round right for NQHS. Saw you again, the playmaker. Here for the blue Lovely side. Flick. The premier duelist right now on this team. Sayu going to catch Tyson, who managed to make their way past the wall, but Peachy's there you for the trade. Still, eye. resurrection going to be invested. The same could be done on the other side, and yes, they are going to bring back Sayu, who's in a slightly risky position, but don't worry, there's plenty of covering fire here as Wichita are forced to retreat and rethink their options. So Lockdown and Viper's Pit are available. The Viper's Pit likely won't come into play for NQHS. I honestly don't think this is such a bad situation, though, for WVB. Yes, you're down a player, but you have all the information in the world. This is a huge map. Four players cannot cover this. They have so little information on the defender's side. All it takes is WBB finding one of these players alone and just 3v1ing them. Lotus there. Hit with a pair of body shots. Kens will have to invest that heal rather quickly as Sayu, making sure that no one's running up through tunnel. But the timing door. Lotus has managed to slip through right here. And it means that a rotation could come in unawares and get easily picked off. See if a jet dies here as they round this corner. Lotus was not ready. Oh, no. Say it was quicker. Oh, no. That crumbled the bits. Ray oh, finishes things off. Him. 
But it, I mean, the positioning was perfect by the Reina. That was exactly what you wanted to be to shut down the rotators. Just uh, sometimes the Jets just a little better. And so, <laughs> I, needless to say, NQHS has got that in spades. Man, the confidence there, the quick flicks. We know that Seiyu can do it. Seiyu is, in terms of ranks, the premier player on North Quincy, the resident Radiant. It was Radiant versus Radiant right there. Lotus, the highest ranked player on Wichita. And man, you could see how well the timing had just made Lotus an invisible agent. They thought that maybe those rotations would be free because they were checking that tube and the timing was just a little bit off where Say was leaving as Lotus just managed to creep on through silently. What a performance from Say to win out that duel. So important. Yeah, in a map like this where you're lacking information and those 3v4s are very winnable for the attackers, it's a tough spot. But a quick take now by WVB, or at least what looks to be one. I would not be surprised to see them turn around here. They have the Omen all the way back towards mid, who's keeping sure that they have some degree of map control on the other side. They've got a lot of options. Sending Jet forward... I still don't even think this means it's a full commit by the attackers. I think they're still feeling things out right now. Trying to draw some rotates. Play that longer range game as well, which they've historically been better at. There's Prodigy taking down his counterpart in Sayu. Showing him, hey, you know what? Last round was nice, but this one's mine. And there's no resurrect to pick him back up this time. Yeah, the op isn't a gun door. It's a state of mind. And <laughs> <laughs> Prodigy has very much embraced that state of mind. Sends in three cloud bursts and then just leaves. Ah. Okay, an interesting fake. Remember, they still have this mid control, but they haven't secured this angle from Peachy. A well-placed shot gets rid of Dawn, and now their smoker is gone. If they want to try and take aim where all of this killjoy utility is set up, it's a jungle out there. Yeah, the lockdown gets so much more use here as well. They do have Hunter's Fury. Should take it out. I think uh, Tyson's got a pretty good read on where that is. Tries to peek out mid with it. Doesn't find anything. But again, Jet holding it down behind. This is something that WV has done extremely well. Peachy peeks around the wall, though. Soft spike plant. 20 seconds. Actually, timer could be a real problem here like day. Really could. East keeping it wide right now. There is a chance to make a play for that spike. Peachy very close, but they aren't close enough to react to that. Prodigy gonna place that spike down with only eight seconds remaining, but suddenly they have the advantage. Are they gonna opt into using the Empress here in the one versus two? They're up against the Blade Storm. And what? No! Prodigy! Prodigy misses right there! Just a lapse of judgment, a lapse of the ocular nerve does not allow them to perceive that East is up here. Teeson misses her first few shots, can't connect with the rest, but brings out the classic and brings it on home wbv on map point up to 12 what a sick clutch by tison as well really hard ring around the rest i'm not sure what went on there for prodigy i mean just laps in judgment like you said not looking one way made that a much closer round than it really needed to be but regardless still prodigy's been solid i again it, it's weird to see players at the bottom of the scoreboard who you kind of respect and are realizing are doing a, a large amount of the impact fragging for the team but prodigy and don have been absolutely critical to this team's success on the other side peachy and bolt same thing goes that was really good play by peachy gets the initial frag unfortunately and qhs couldn't hold but now they've got to hold every other round following this that's five more in a row to send us into overtime on their map pick mind you perfection or bust north quincy they're capable of it we've seen them bringing these back before the recon bolt is going to be attached to ray who's gonna to have to claim some space right here Tyson stayed in the Owl Drone while everyone else pushed to get even more information. So it's information in spades right now for Wichita, but do they know about Peachy coming around the corner? They aren't fast enough on that flick, and Dawn manages to win that one out. Still, Sayu gets for trade. No resurrections on deck for now. Ah, uh, but incidentally, uh, the pop smoke wasn't quite what they were looking for. It puts them in such a good position. And now Lotus, yeah, gets to take up a spot without ever having anybody look at them. Just backs away. Knows they've got a player advantage. No need to take that kind of a duel. Get a couple shots off and leave. Spike down now. Viper's pit for the defenders. Again, has not been used yet. I would love to see it more proactively being put into action by Ray. Unfortunately, it's a little too late for that. 12 to 7. This could be it, like day. Oh, no point saving it for Valorant 2. How it comes. Are they going to decide to break through this wall? It's already moving a little bit ahead of the AoE. Lotus trying to play from the backside now. It's going to be Ray all by themselves. There's been a teleport somewhere. The Omen Ultimate still Ray thinks they can win out the duels. They've caught Lotus in the red, but they have not caught them in the gunfight. 13 to 7 on the map pick of North Quincy here. Our first seed. That was crazy. Wichita. I mean, on paper, I think if you ask anybody... 
Like, who wins this map? NQHS, it's their map pick. They're comfortable in the Viper. They're the only team playing the Viper. They're more rotate heavy. They're much more comfortable in the mid round. Everything was right until Prodigy bought an operator. And Prodigy was just... It messed this, with them. It was such an unknown variable heading into the map. But once it came up, it was very apparent. Like, every single one of Prodigy's kills, yes, the kills were low, but they were almost all first picks, which is huge for teams like this. I mean, incredible. This could, you could not ask for a better start for Wichita. That was a map that I think, even in their heads, they were kind of writing off as, you know what, this is North Quincy's pick. Where it's good. We got to get through it. We just got to get to the rest of the map so we can not have to deal with Icebox anymore. But my God, did they just deal with Icebox? Those entry frags. They not only give you the numerical advantage, they may force out the usage of the revive, but they also create a mental block for a team where every single corner you're peeking, is it going to be Prodigy with an op taking care of you? It's okay. There's time to calm those nerves. You can have some breathing exercises during our break. <laughs> and gentlemen wichita may be our second seed but right now there's only one thing on their mind and that's the big old one in their map score column and most importantly that that one was gained on the map pick of north quincy where we assumed door that maybe north quincy would be at their best playing the viper but it was tough to get past that uh tough to get past this operator but you know what Tough things aren't always bad. <laughs> Such as Asus ROG Tough Range, which is the official hardware sponsor of HSEL and the Spring Major 2021. 
globally recognized as the number one gaming brand worldwide and used by elite school esports teams. Maybe that's how Prodigy got so good with the operator. What what am I gonna do with this guy? You know, he do, it's not just during broadcast. He does this on the regulars while we play <laughs> games. He just slips in like reads into into our random games of Valorant. Like, ah, please. This 3K is brought to you by the frenzy. <laughs> Unrealistic. Yeah, it, <laughs> it looks good, but okay, let's get back. Let's get back to the match because again, I think that's super cool. Talking about it during the break. Uh, not only did they lose what was supposed to be the best map, the map that they were most likely to win, you've also lost the first map, which in a five map series where you have a sort of loser pick system, all of a sudden, if this game just goes back and forth, back and forth, like it should be. Uh, in theory, with this map pick ban system, given even teams, the team that wins the first map is at a massive advantage. So this hill to climb for NQHS just got significantly larger, but they're going to be climbing it on ascent. It gets more and more difficult, but they're going to try and even this one up. We're going over to ascent next. And w when we look at how these teams are going to operate on this map, I'm very keen to see how executes are going to take place in terms of taking A here by Wichita, because we know that these guys have some very, very clean executes. We saw a load of them on B on our last map, and I think that A is fruitful ground for some great smoking, as well as some great flash plays from things like a Phoenix or a Sky. Or even sometimes you could play the Omen here, but Omen's kind of fallen out of vogue with Astra coming to the meta, at least in uh, Korea. People like Zumba have done a great job of making sure that Astra is in many cases, the go-to smoker. Yeah, I mean, Omen's still, it's still viable. And I think at this level of play, when you talk about these high school students, comfortability really does have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so Dawn looked really, really excellent on the Omen. I, I actually, even if there was an Astra there, unless it was as comfortable as the Omen, I kind of want Dawn to just stay on it. They looked really, really comfortable playing it and now starting off on the attacking side for Wichita. I honestly just want nothing to change. I want to see Lotus on the reina ken's playing on killjoy is a little bit interesting this is a map where having a good reina is maybe one of the most important things there is after of course your silva which is a must pick for this map where tyson and bolt i think are, are both neither of them are going to have any problem having a really solid amount mm -hmm. of impact but prodigy with an operator is kind of a question mark i don't think we see that much value actually come out of it should prodigy and ever end up investing in it i think the real opportunities to watch here are coming from east and sayu who are going to have really great opportunities to get these little 2v1 duels off. That's really what Ascent is centered around, is smaller skirmishes and 1v1 duels, where all of a sudden, we have those moments that uh, that we got out of WVV, where they were playing on the B side of Icebox, and they were peeking into two-mans, they were not double-peeking, weren't working together particularly well in the smaller skirmishes. I think that's where NQHS can shine, and I think that's why Ascent is a, a pretty decent map pick for them after you get Icebox out. Perhaps could take advantage of a both aggressive and confident player in Lotus. However, Lotus has shown they have the skills to make these solo skirmishes work. And like you said, if you're not careful with how you're trying to manage your double peaks in your trades, it's very easy to lose out in those two v ones, especially against a Reina where the dismiss is always an option. When you see that double peak, pop one, I'm out, boys. See you later. Yeah, let's keep an eye on them if they set up. What's the what's the setup here? Silva played alongside the Killjoy. Is a, a bit interesting for a B setup. Omen playing in mid, no surprise. I'm curious to see how well we get uh, Peachy actually playing that, given that Ray and Peachy have been kind of back and forth on the, the controllers and the Sentinels and who plays what. I have no doubt they've, uh, they've got a pretty good idea of what they're doing. Default to start things off for Wichita, early peak by Sayu. What's new? <laughs> well, I, I guess he heard the orb and he was like, well, this is my chance, but there was good covering fire there. And they actually managed to secure the orb afterwards as well. I believe that was taken by the Killjoy. So a little bit closer, just a touch towards that uh, that lockdown, of course. And now we're rotating a spike over towards B main. They're going to have to deal with this turret, which can be increasingly difficult with pistols because they don't do that much damage at this kind of range. I'll actually back away. Yeah, I think that's the right call. You brought up maybe the most key point in pistol rounds with a killjoy up on the board. Rainers are up too, though. And uh, the first of those to get a frag is certainly going to be in a very good position. Peachy, love that bit of information gathering. Actually, it tells him a lot about where the positioning is. Sova should be able to get over. Toss a sonic dart over. I can't tell if he's lining up or just waiting. This this feels like they're trying to play retake, but Sayu is in, a, in an awful position to actually get anything done, but somehow trades himself out for one. 
Setting yourself up for one. And when you're in that bad of a position, you can call that one a win. But Bolt is going to be winning even harder. Revealed by the recon Bolt. Attempting for the floor bang here is Tyson, who proves himself to be a bit of a sober differential in this case. But it all comes down to a 1v1. And Tyson, who has proven himself so good on the sober, is going to get themselves that frag. What a play coming through from hell. Rotating out and finding East as they moved on in. I did wonder... When we saw Sayu there, getting getting the trade from what was an unfavorable position, maybe that it would facilitate a good retake here from North Quincy, but Tyson's just a lot to deal with, you know? Yeah, it, it wasn't Sayu's fault. Like, it, it was fundamentally a fine position, but for how they were playing, right, the bolt was kind of meandering around and spawn a little bit. They were a little slow to rotate over the site. You don't want anybody on there. If you got there fast enough, then yeah, it's a great position, but nobody was there to back Sayu up. And had they been, I think that round actually goes very, very differently. This time, though, WV have a weapons advantage. They get on. And all thanks to Tyson, who I, I want to give a huge shout out to, because I don't think Tyson's dropped a clutch yet, which is just crazy. Calm under pressure. Very good trait for a young high school player to have. One that will carry you far in the esports world. Prodigy playing forward here with the Sheriff. Has to get rid of that recon bolt. And now knows that people are going to be moving through heaven. Bolt's going to be the first one to make contact here. But up against the Spectre, the weapon's disadvantage is incredibly strong. It's only going to be East with 34 HP up against five oh, people. Man. It's all but hopeless with a classic in hand. And once again, Tyson's like, okay, time to get my name back up on the board, boys. It's Tyson time. <laughs> Poor guy just got turned into Swiss cheese through hell. That was uh, that was not a fun situation to be in. Slowly but surely, dying to specters through a wall is uh, not a great way to go. But regardless, you get weapons up for the third. This was it, right? Last time we saw NQHS start that pretty dominant start that they had to the game on Icebox, which was Granted, did look good until that operator came along. We'll we'll ignore that though. By winning this round off the back of the bonus, WBB then went to do the same thing back to them in the second half. Nobody has dropped the bonus round thus far. Will WBB be the first? Prodigy has played two rounds now with this sheriff, and given what we saw on Icebox, we know what that might mean, right? Already, that's going to be a very early use of a lockdown. Great generation here. Do they back it up though, right? Uh, quick push on, Prodigy in position. Turret still putting a bit of a wrench into the mix. Prodigy loved to push here actually. Gets one, is able to get out, scot free. Made something of the lockdown that wasn't just a spike plant, which is a beautiful advantage to have. Turns it into two, my God. Do you get out? Oh God, 19 HP. Says, you know what? I'm gonna send it going. No, 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 but it's not happening. <laughs> But now you can force these close range fights on the point, right? This is less of an advantage for the rifles than if they'd taken a longer range poking fight earlier on. They managed to claim all this space using that lockdown, but now they have to make good on the advantage that they have. Right now, Lotus playing it stealthily. Gets oh! one, gets two! What a beautiful play there from Lotus. And what a good strategic masterclass from Wichita. You may have the weapons advantage with those rifles, boys, but we're not going to let you take the optimal engagement range. And now they've lost what was such a critical round for them. I mean, last time I was making excuses for Prodigy, you know, oh, yeah, it's impact frags are important. They're first picks. And it's perfectly valid, but I don't think there's any contesting that Prodigy is actually just a monster now. That was a ridiculous... Ridiculous Stopping round to, to put name. up. And honestly, I can't think of a more important round to come up that large because that's going to get in a perfect economic position for, I mean, the next, what, three, four rounds? It's a big advantage for Wichita. North Quincy, remember, they fumbled a 4-0 lead on Icebox. They'd be sweating a little bit right now. Say you, falls low. Would love some healing, but no Sage, no Sky. 34 and HP in a dream until round number five. Decent sending the owl drone. Time for a little bit of a scout, a little bit of an explore. The same could be said of Bolt. Look at the rotates, though. NQHS, I, I really do appreciate the flexible style they've played. No the Mid-round calls, it, it's been a little bit wrong. and You can't kind of fault them too much for what goes on, right? When they when they rotate to the wrong side, it's going to happen. But it makes way for plays like this from East. Getting caught out in a, in a very great position up on Catwalk. Now, there's very little information for Wichita. The only thing they know is where East is. They don't know where any of the other players are because of how rapidly they rotated. Yeah, the sun was back in the back of heaven. I don't think he has much control. I think he's got a lined-up dart somewhere, actually, is what it seems like. Once this execute comes out, what happens? 
Silva in position. Oh. East is good for one here. Again, I don't think much is happening. Wait, where's the Silva? There, there's got to be a lineup or something that he's ready for. Or no, are they just playing a... a being willing to play a 2v3 retake here, I'm not a huge fan of. Mm. Well, they do have a frenzy, so uh, <laughs> it's going to be difficult to close that distance, especially against the rifles. And <laughs> oh, that's tough. Yep. Oh, man. There are a lot of hell kills today. People are being dragged down through there by hook or by crook. A Spectre now. We'll get the close ranges that they want with it. But uh, one versus three. It's a dream for Ray. Sheriff in hand as well. Could look for an early frag here if someone doesn't catch their corners. For now, they've identified the spike location. They're going to find Lotus, but they're not going to find the shots. And Oh, Teeson, you're having a game, aren't you? Uh, Teeson's having a day, is what he's having. That's true. Teeson's <laughs> having a day. Might be, might be. I retract my statement. The whole, uh, the whole day for Teeson. Really, really sick start, though, for WB. Again, I have... Very few complaints about this team. I think there's somebody said about the skirmishes, maybe uh, on the attacking side, and QHS can start playing a little bit more of a default uh, and then trying to slow the game down a lot. But as far as these 1v1s goes, as long as WV keeps putting the pedal to the metal, they're going to be feeling real good about their odds. And QHS have opportunity to turn it around, though. And I think this is exactly what they've got going for them right now. Quick mid control for the WVB side. Bolt's side. listening for that alt orb. Has the Odin over on B. Maybe look for an early wall bang here. Say you has for a position identified door and they're going to have to get out there fast. So take a look at NQHS and how passive they're playing, right? They're Omen all the way in the back of market playing a double with Bolt. Not really much information to be had. Bolt is using this drone from like a mile away and he's found out absolutely nothing, right? There's congratulations. There's four people in mid. I think we all knew that at this point. <laughs> and that's kind of the tough part is because NQHS are playing so passively and not really trying to poke and prod early in the round. They're giving away a lot of space that WBB is just never giving back to them. Slowly eroding away the areas that they can breathe in. But look at this nasty angle here from Seiyu. If they're not careful and checking that, it could be difficult to play with. East was in the other corner. The crossfire proves too much for Prodigy, but Peachy has fallen elsewhere. Three versus three suddenly, and Ray could look for the lockdown here to try and claim some space after the spike plan. Seiyu just has to be patient here. Wait for the disengage. They know someone's on site, right? Hunter's Fury. Gonna get a huge amount done, but the Nano Swarm will stop that early attempt at a defuse. Say it removes the sight lines right here, and now we'll look for an even closer fight. But Teeson is unable to get too much done there. Finally, North Quincy put themselves on the board. Yeah, and well, at the beginning of the round, I think it was definitely headed WVV's way as far as map control was concerned. NQHS played a fantastic post plant there. Getting in on top of the spike, not letting them set up for post plants, utilizing almost all of their utility to try and set exactly that up. Now they've got an ultimate advantage. They've got weapons in their hand. This is this is the foundations of a pretty sizable comeback that they've got going for them. If they can dole out these ultimates kind of one after another and win rounds efficiently with them, I think they're in a pretty good spot. Let's take a look at the economies, though, because WVV is not in the greatest spot either. Whoever wins this comes away with more than just this round let me tell you that much a quick push though on they've got to get past all this killjoy utility and that's pretty tough it's already being warded away by the sova dart now throwing the lockdown committing even more heavily but the rotations are already here there's four members lying in wait to collapse on this site the second that lockdown is gone will bolt try and play for the flank is the question those nano swarms slow down any rotation through the killjoy isn't going to they're not going to detain, detain anybody there. Prodigy managed to try and sneak into the back line, but is only going to be punished by a rain of bullets from East. Lotus, the fragger, that always can be relied upon for Wichita is one of a few left alive on the point, and Teeson with the trigger discipline doesn't reveal himself until they know that Peachy's trying to line up that paranoia. The smokes are gone. North Quincy's friends are starting to fall down all around them, but they've got their presence on point. It's only going to be the killjoy. And Ray, well, out of the two killjoys, he's just constructed differently. I, I love the post plant positioning that we got out of WVV, but it all came down to the pre plan. It all came down to the plan itself. They left so much time to try and get the rotate through. We know how quick on their feet NQHS have been, sometimes to their own detriment. Right? They just run to the other side of the map when they, uh, when they see somebody's shadow. But that time it actually worked out hugely in favor for them. They got there quick. Even with good post play positioning, there was plenty of time to clear all the corners efficiently with those four members. East comes up big with a couple of frags. Get on the site. That was textbook 
defense by NQHS. And I think WBV have got to account for that a little bit more. I don't think they've fully sensed that those really hyper quick rotations have come through for NQHS. And so I think it's going to be pretty hard for them to actually take advantage of them. East right now could be isolated. We'll get the dismiss, but we'll still be identified as the attempt comes in from Prodigy. But they are going to lose out there on their ultimate. Sayu still going to take out two before they fall. And very quickly, this has become a two versus one scenario. Closing the door here is Lotus. Or maybe they already tried to close it. Yep, it's already been broken down. Needs to keep an eye on Heaven. Gets hit by that Shock Dart. And the overheal isn't going to last forever. Spike's been gained. Shock Dart sent in again. And it's Ow. another connection here. Lotus is not having a great time. And Peach is going to make sure that the uh, the good time is never going to start for the Rainer. Defensive victory. And like you said, the attempt to build up a comeback here for North Quincy. It can continue rolling forward. They once again have that lockdown. They have the Blade Storm here from Seiyu, which can rescue them from a poor economic round if they find themselves losing a gun as well. There's a lot of tools. Uh, like I said, they started off, they won one with the Hunter's Fury. They get back in. Now they've got a lockdown that can win rounds. The Empress with East performing as well as they are right now could be absolutely massive. Whereas WVB have not done as good a job of really doling out their ultimates one at a time, not to mention their economy is in shambles. This could be a mirror of what we saw in the last game, if I'm being completely honest. NQHS has every opportunity in the world to leverage this into a real lead for the game. Yeah, so you doesn't want to take that fire mid-range against all those sheriffs. Can hear the very distinct sound of revolvers pushing out high-caliber bullet after high-caliber bullet. And now it's just all a scouting game, door, Trying to gather some information and figure out where they can take engagements against a much more highly kitted out team. I, I like this look from WVB, though. Honestly, I, I think when they're playing slow, they're at their best. I think Tyson is a phenomenal Sova. And I think the fact that more often than not, they're able to poke through and use multiple man pressure and that NQHS are more often than not just folding to it and letting them have that space. Something they should be taking more advantage of. And right now, I think they've actually kind of done that, right? Lack of information forces NQHS back. The second that smoke is thrown, another rotate is there onto A. What they're looking for here, maybe a couple frags and a spike down, but East is going to cause so many problems being in this hell position because you can't outduel them with one player, but you can't get enough players on site to outduel them with multiple because everyone else is lying in the wings. It's no problem to clean this up. Lotus in a pretty good position. Maybe just get two with them, but unfortunately not much more than that to be had for WBV. And nothing invested in terms of alts here from North Quincy either. They're maintaining the threat of that lockdown, the threat of the Empress. What do you think is the role of Empress as an ultimate on Ascent in particular for someone who didn't complete the uh, Verena Asian contract? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's honestly a lot of uses, right? Tight clutches where you're like 1v2, 1v3. If you've got it going in, you don't want to use it in spur of the moment because it does have a long cast time and a lot of players will just run at you the second mm -hmm. they hear you pop it. Uh, but it's very hard for Reynas to kind of predict when a good time to use it because you have to say, hey, I'm sensing there's going to be two to three players in this area and that I'm going to be taking engagement pretty soon. So on the attacking side, it's pretty straightforward. But on the defending side, a little bit trickier to time, but I think there's plenty of opportunities. <laughs> Prodigy. I can't tell if he's a soldier or a surgeon with that kind of accuracy. What a cover. Prodigy gets the second headshot of the round here. Finally getting a gun back in their hands and they're making a lot of work happen with it. North Quincy now find themselves on a significant numerical back foot, but still no major inroads made towards a site here by Wichita. But Wichita, I mean, have a ton of space right now. Look at this. Silva up mid. Lockdown's juice by their side. Just taking out. Look at that. Ray around the corner. No shot. Tyson's there. Has a perfect position. Now can regroup with the lockdown. They don't need to worry about the outside of site because they're 4v2. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. They just throw everybody on site. Lock a bunch of Killjoy utility on top of that spike and sit real pretty. It's cool that they managed to uh, start building up towards that next lockdown as well. Straight off the back with that spike plant. East is going to break down the door right here, but it's going to be difficult to make inroads towards this market. But Paranoia is thrown out, but I don't think it near sights oh, anyone. going to ruin this whole thing. There's no yeah. way they can take out Prodigy and another Oh, they player. might have caught a little bit of a cloak maybe, and yes, they have been identified. Peachy wins out that door and doesn't take any damage in the process. Suddenly, 
It is a three versus two. And oh, no. Two versus two. Somehow, Peachy's gone massive here. That's going to be a vulnerable. But supplied to East, it's going to make them very disadvantaged. And the forthcoming battle. And Ken is more than happy to take advantage of that one. But that was so much closer than Wichita would have considered comfortable. Finally, though. After four rounds going the way of Wichita and four rounds going the way of North Quincy, Wichita have broken this streak. Question is, will they get another four? Well, it's fortunate they broke the spell to get that far. Again, I think there's there's holes in this team, and most of them have to do with the skirmishes, but I think NQHS are having a really hard time of kind of punishing those and taking advantage of it, right? In that exact uh, position, Prodigy playing in Garage, it's a fun position to play. Peachy read it out absolutely fine but the way that wbv can make that unwinnable is by having a player play on a highway and hide behind that wall to kind of force a double angle but they didn't take advantage of that they're not putting themselves in advantageous positions to skirmish and if nqhs can say approach the, these fights with two players and leverage that they're willing to rotate more heavily and say hey we've got this two three-man hit squad roaming around the defensive side of the map and it's going to get us picks I think that's the game that they win. But right now, when they're all spread out like this, taking 1v1 after 1v1 against a WBV who continue to take more and more map control, forcing these unfair fights, it's it's going to be a tough time. Just right into the crosshair. Peachy unnerving Prodigy through that entire time. Spamming through the smoke. Prodigy consistently asking, have I been found out here? Is there some manner of information that's not been accounted for? Jason sends out that recon dart and it is going to actually ping Bolt before being destroyed. However... That investment of utility has dragged quite a good amount of attention over towards B site. However, what you've got to look at here is how fast does Dawn respawn once there's a big old rush? It's not quiet by any means, but Wichita are going to try and claim some space. East takes out one, finds a near-sighted omen and manages to take them down in short order. North Quincy are now collapsing from every single side against Tyson. Finds himself overwhelmed by Seiyu, and that's a flawless for North Quincy breaking the streaks. Yeah, and what WVV's greatest weakness is, is what I think NQHS's greatest strength is. That was a beautiful cascade of five kills coming in for them. You get one after the other. East holds onto the site, understands, hey, I don't necessarily have to frag these. I just have to draw attention. Manages to get one, and the, again, the holes are starting to show, and that Lotus wasn't actually pre-aiming the angle that East was on even after they had the information that was there. It's probably not communicated or something along the lines of that, but East takes full advantage of it. Frags one, goes back behind the box, and just buys time for the rest of the team to come and help them, as opposed to what WVV have been doing, <laughs> whereas that's just taking map control and then using it to win 1v1s. But if NQHS continue to just not give them 1v1s, they're going to be just fine. Oh, Prodigy thought that maybe off the back of that ping, they could manage to get themselves a nicely placed Bladestorm. Doesn't opt in for the right click. And that omen smoke there might obfuscate some of the turret. Wow. Lotus with an early frag there with the sheriff. That's going to be a gun that might be able to be retreated later. But remember, the crossing over towards that weaponry is going to be more difficult than it sounds already. It's been traded out. Only two weapons remain. Or rather, only two knives remain. For Prodigy, who's actually handed off their sheriff to someone else. I love this backing away. This is WVV being really conscious about the fact that attackers have an advantage when players go down. Even in trades, 4v4 is always going to be better because of the lack of information for defenders. They have to spread themselves out. And NQHS, in very NQHS fashion, have just completely backed away. They don't want to play anything. They'll just play retake later. 4v4, they seem perfectly content with that. Especially because they have the lockdown. I don't think that's not much of a problem. Uh, and getting back on top of this, where do WVV post plant set up? Because Prodigy's up in this position, but this lockdown is going to force these two players to try and take a fight that I don't think they're going to win. It's knife or nothing. You've got to hit the headshot here. And no, Peachy's going to be a little bit faster. That lockdown's going to force everybody away. And remember, if anyone's caught in hell, they're going to be staying there for a while. Ken's a set nade. Will it's it catch late. someone during the defuse? Might be a little bit too late at this point. The defuse going to be stuck. Peachy won't get out of it with his life or his gun, but will get out of it with the round point. And you know what? That's enough. That's NQHS maybe coming away with the half, which is honestly one of the biggest things to look for here. If they get Go away 7-5, that. that's a great shout. As well, buying operators here, uh, not a bad choice. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to throw a, a wrench into the mix at the final bit of the round. You've got some extra cash in your hands. You might as well just, yeah, go for it. Toss them on the ground. You can always use them if you need them. First pick, very likely to go their way. Four ultimates up, though, for WBV. I want to see every single one of them pop by the end of this round, if I'm being real. I think you can put him in a great position. Bolt. Oh, it's a good thought. Unfortunately, doesn't really get much of anything. 
Yeah, just a little bit of damage there onto Ken's. The attacker Killjoy, once again, we're seeing the same execute onto B, but it's a bait because everyone else is moving over to A. Say you has no idea. This is going to be a free A site, but now they're starting to rotate back over. You know that Seiyu has popped this blade storm, wants to get involved as quickly as possible. Valir comes out, afflicts the near site, and Lotus is quick to take advantage of that as they pop the Empress, knowing that they have time to do so. That's going to be the Hunter's Fury. It's all over Bolt. He doesn't want to lead it to their teammates. Instead, he'll play his own game of Dosido -si -do and dodge away as East is going to be dueling with Prodigy in the Garden Center. That's one. Can they get two? No, they cannot. The Phantom winning out in this case as the Odin is going to start spraying out fire all over this site. But is the All Father enough to take on four people? I dare say no door. That was a really excellent take from WVV. Not just like the fake in general. Oh, wait. Bulk gets one. I don't. Yeah, there's no way you get three here. It's no time, anyways. But WV, they're going to go even in the half and off the back of a good take themselves. They have confidence in their fake. They get onto the site. And I don't think there was a single smoke used by their Omen. That nobody even even touched a smoke button until after the spike was down, which made that retake that much more impossible for NQHS to come in and do. We break out of the half even. 6-6 six, six, WBB looking to send us to match point. NQHS looking to bring things up to even. It's all on the pistols. We have not seen a bonus round drop. that will remind us of that. Like, they, I, How has that been the case? That's crazy. Yeah, it's been a... Uh... <laughs> It's been a questionable day of Valorant. But you know what? I like having my expectations supplanted. I like being surprised. North Quincy now moving over onto the attack. They want to spring a surprise here onto WBV. But they are having a little bit of split pressure here. We might see the Killjoy moving up through mid, trying to gather some information or potentially afflict some false impressions upon the defense of Wichita. If Prodigy killed somebody through this wall... Okay, thank God. Thank God. I, I was going to lose. Can you him. imagine? <laughs> oh, no. Sai was low, though. That is, uh, oh, that's still painful. Banged. There's no Sage or anything to save you from this. And in a pistol round, being at 15 HP is... I mean, might as well just be a death sentence. Congratulations. You're now the entry and information specialist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll try and trade you out. Good luck. Bolt going to be leading away this time. Are they going to opt into the ultimate? Or they don't want to make that sound. They don't want to give it away. However, the uh, placement of these dark covers will give away the game as Dawn's going to be returning the obfuscation favor. Teeson going to be playing in the corner right here off hell. Can get one with a mad firing of the ghost, but the frenzy is even more fanatic when it comes to that high fire rate. Remember, every kill here for East gives them more health, more tankiness against these long time to kill pistols. KXNS, all by themselves. And you got to check to the right because say you, <laughs> they won't give you another chance. Nice. Get themselves a sheriff too. Back to the lead for NQHS as well, which is even better. See if they can convert this bonus. It shouldn't be a problem for them to get this. It's the one afterwards that we're worried about. And, uh, you know, coming out of this with a decent number of weapons out. What is the buy from WB? I'm actually curious because they've had a lot of success with uh, frenzies and sheriffs in this mm -hmm. game so far. And I don't even think it's like a bad shout to, to put a couple of them up on the board. Lotus has one. Decent upgrades to a ghost. Unfortunately, I don't think they got enough frags to really back up much more than that in the last round. But look at this push from the Rain and Jet. Puts Prodigy. Oh, no, 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 no. There's no way they... Oh, no, you, you can't can't Oh, Prodigy! That. He's dropped his spaghetti everywhere. Oh, someone apply the Heimlich Maneuver because we've got ourselves a bona fide choker right here. KXNS going to be taken down by Seiyu with that Spectre. And well, they might have got something done with frenzies and sheriffs in previous rounds. The classic is no such weapon for WBV moving in here with a classic, a ghost, and a dream. Decent's had himself a day, as we've said before. But uh, I think this is more day of the dead. And East is going to make sure of that. I mean, it. look, let's just say the, the classic is a little too imprecise for the likes of Prodigy. <laughs> Yeah, he's more he's more of a precise aiming guy. Yeah, yeah. That was uh oh, he was so good. It, it, like, okay, you can't expect him to win on the on the eco round, whatever. But like at the same time, it was such a good opportunity that they had been pushed up. He ate the smoke to the face, ate the blind, said, yeah, you know what? Remained I, calm when he was the paranoia. Exactly. And it's that kind of play that gets you those beautiful situations where all of a sudden that can turn the entire game around. But unfortunately. It's dropped. It's not the end of the world. It was a round they expected to lose anyways, but 
Does hurt to see. Prodigy, not dissuaded by last round, pushes <laughs> up again. Let's go, oh, but what do you got get... for us? No! Oh That's my god! Be a misclick. No. Oh, the no there's got to be so many jitters that went into rifles, that. rifles, though. There you can get, could get caught out of their rotation, and Lotus is going to be the one. But now two rifles are in the hands of North Quincy. This is no longer as uneven as other bonus rounds may have been. Bolt. Looking to try and get the plant right here, but covering fire will be coming through from the Omen. The smokes have been expended, though, and going to have to wait a while for that next dark cover to come on up. And the, the drone doesn't find much of anything. Dawn goes aggressive. I honestly don't mind the move. I think had that pick been found, it would have been massive for him. Maybe spray down here, low HP on Dawn. Peachy does have a slight weapon advantage, but yeah, no shot. Ken comes in, cleans things up. Great retake by WBV. And they win the round after the one that they were supposed to lose. That ends a streak of bonus rounds being won as well. Puts kind of a, a bit of a stop to that, which I appreciate. It means that they're playing solid. I, it means you're not losing rounds that they shouldn't be losing. It's just like converted back into a lead, though. What's happened in Prodigy's head at the moment? Like, what forced that tailwind? I, I like to imagine it's just like walking on sunshine and repeat on repeat and he's just like but well, he's not even listening to his teammates he's just like doing whatever hitting headshots every once in a while just being nuts just finger slips on to the whatever keys got dash bound to but mm. uh eh, well uh we'll let that one pass he's I mean, still got traded out for two so it's like it That's is true. fine uh, in the grand scheme of things but it did look a bit odd all right ray taken out early a long range headshot from a vandal of lotus it's going to be lost though say you once again traded, that top frag of Lotus proving themselves again and again to be such a dangerous individual. Will not win out the rain at all, but they know that Dawn is playing very close here in the gardens. That's too far. With it that judge. Hit. Oh, it can? Wow, just barely. Easton's having a day. Will his day continue? Or will it be ruined? Easton a one versus two. Has the Empress. Has the spike. They want to save this rifle, though. They do have a fair amount of time so they could just be trying to rotate as quickly as possible or making as little noise as possible onto any lurking people who could have pushed up through mid because they know that Tyson's had some significant presence in mid all the way through this round i mean the plan should go through no no problem and he's so this Empress, actually, WV might just let this Empress run out. I think they know it's up and are just like, hey, you know, we got some time. Ooh, they want to push us, so be it. But, oh, man, that's beautiful. Oh, man, this is almost guaranteed to. Like, it's hard to lose this. Oh, they've got the read on it, though. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> play. WBV, their heads are squarely planted on their shoulders. Okay. Wow, they actually, they knew the timing was there for, for the rain it across. That's insane. That was such a wonderful usage of the alarm bot as well. Then taking the double peek afterwards, knowing that that crosshair would not be placed exactly where their heads would be. Like you said, heads squarely on their shoulders, not blown away by a vandal. WBV. Excellent performance there. Two defuses in a row. North Quincy. They need to re-establish some dominance here. Say he's not going to be buying, I don't think. Gonna be looking to try and get something off of this blade storm instead. Let's take a look at the setup here for the defenders, because I think it's actually really interesting. Killjoy shifted over to the A site now. Well, alongside the omen. I love that they keep the, the jet and the Sova together. I appreciate teams that have the, the depth of playbook on their defensive side. I think it's often very much overlooked. It's not what we're getting here. It, it's very different pressure from NQHS and what we saw at a WB. Notice how they're still holding mid. The rain is still in there. They're not giving up the space for free. Holding onto gardens through the back of heaven with the omen. This take looks very free, but in reality, a quick rotate over from the Sova and the Reyna, which is coming in beautifully for WBV, could shut this whole thing down. They're gonna get on site, but by the time they start working on this spike, there's gonna be a retake roaring and ready to go. They've already set up one of the swarm grenades that they need for that close plant scenario to try and dissuade any defuses. Lotus, throws out the Leer. However, they're going to be suppressed. The Paranoia does a little bit too much, and we've got to remember that, that Paranoia did come from Hell. It's basically guaranteed that one of the people defending this spike is going to be there. Lotus needs to be careful. On the drop down, checks, but doesn't check in time, and PG's a little bit faster on the draw. Teeson doesn't look to the left, and well, 
It's once of a right for North Quincy as they manage to take the lead in this series and get ever closer to tying us up. I mean, it's not too far away, but at the same time, the scoreline's close enough that I'm not sure it's that free either. I mean, the lockdown's on deck for NQHS, but there'll be one coming up for WBV as well in not too much time. Ken's will have that on board. They've got a weapon advantage. They want to convert this into double digits. Where are they taking it to do it is the question that I'm asking myself. A site's looking mighty juicy right now, but we spike dropped. Do they pick this up, actually? Okay, there it is. Yep. Looks like they want to commit to this fully. But there's a three-man stack on this side that could make things pretty difficult. Oh, yeah. So the second they push onto the site, those smokes are almost all going to be pushed at the instant. Look at this. Three, four members ready to push. There comes one from heaven. It's Lotus taking out one. The rest of the players pushing out through gardens. Ready to get there. Unfortunately, the timing's just a little bit off. Tyson looking to get another frag up on the board. Can't do that. NQHS now up a member and up in weapons. The shots are connecting. It's a bit shaky at times, but they come out ahead. Leveraging that weaponry advantage, Peachy. Going for the shadow step here to create a little bit of distance. It's going to be a pair of lockdowns placed, but Ray is not waiting for any ultimates to pop. He's just going to pop them in the head instead. Maybe detained, but it doesn't matter. You're going to prison. <laughs> but you know what? It's minimum security. It's, it's kind of nice. It's one of those ones with cable. <laughs> not the uh, not the NA kind. I see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a British prison. You want Our... some biscuits, mate? <laughs> They just serve tea and crumpets for every meal. That's your punishment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. 10 8 back over. Looks like A site is actually going to spell it to be mid. I think cat play is likely on deck here for them. Unfortunately, they'll dodge Prodigy right on the round where they buy an operator. I love this buy from WBV. I think they know how important it is uh, to get that operator up on deck. And oh no. Oh no. NQHS. Please. Please. Oh, they okay, the children it. first. It's good. I love the repeat by Prodigy. God, the operator play out of Prodigy is just crazy, man. Oh, Sayuva, long range headshot and the finish onto Dawn. Mid control going to be slowly deteriorating here for WBV. And they know, hey, they saw that op shot onto the Aldrone, right? Maybe we won't push A. Maybe we'll move over towards B instead. We know we have mid control. We can push through pizza. I'll have a pepperoni, please. Lotus going in for a frag, please Big manages to take out Bolt. And now you've got to worry about that potential flank coming through towards the back of B as Tyson gets himself one, gets himself two. Are they going to block each other in the smoke? <laughs> they will, but Ken's is faster to react. Yeah, Ken's gives him a little smooch on the way by. Takes him out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A kiss of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now up to 9-10. That was a clean round by WBV as well. They managed to up their economy. Prodigy gets an operator in hand and has money to back it should they lose a round. They have ultimates going their way. Let's take a look at who's going to get the first of these lockdowns up. It is Ray by just a tad, but Lotus comes up big with the flank there. And I think that's what might start winning these rounds for WBV. If they've realized that, hey, you know, NQHS have been very insistent on playing together as a group and not leaving much around to map control, they can punish that and absolutely should continue to. Look at Ken's getting a little adventurous here on Cat, thinking, hey, you know what? I can peek. Maybe not. In comes the Reyna to kind of group up with them. Maybe play a rotate. Rotate is the call. It oh. should be a retake here, though. I, I Honestly, Tyson might be able to get like one or two, but Tyson's job should either be to stall if the players are going to come in time or... Well, well, I'll I'm tell you, whatever, he, uh, whatever his job was, he didn't do it. <laughs> what, whatever stall it was, it was only microseconds. This site going to be cleared as Ray goes for the plant and get just a little bit closer towards that lockdown. I believe we have a blade storm available. It's going to be Prodigy trying to check out the back of site right there, but can't quite connect with an LOS on anybody. Takes the peak with the operator. A free range shot won't be claiming any lives, and a second can be said of a second, but they know now that the operator has arrived. However, time not particularly on the side of WBV. One of them going to be caught with that paranoia. Save from the back, getting themselves four. Only Lotus remains, but East wins out Reyna versus Reyna. What a performance from these duelists. Do I take the operator? Opting out. I'm actually amazed that they didn't see that flank from East coming. Or rather, Sayu. I mean, they've done that every single time. They're looking to the east and you came from the west. <laughs> You're so stupid. I hate okay. me too. I hate me too. <laughs> oh, but I mean, okay. I'll give you credit where credit's due. That was a good one. But still, the Sayu came from the west, but the same side where they've... Oh, like, 
that was the first time WVV haven't managed to deal with it. Every other time, WVV have been watching it. Like, Lotus has taken it out. It hasn't been a problem. But that time, they're just like, ah, you know what? He's probably not going to come from that way. Why? Uh, doesn't feel like it, maybe. Does come from that way. Sprays down three. Round one. Now you're heading into almost map point. Raise on, though. Gets first pick up for NQHS. Prodigy here looking for a wall bang, but can't quite connect. An unlucky spray over onto Peachy. And once again, Seiyu, bloodthirsty, looking for Prodigy right here. Catches their shoulder through the glass. Swap over to a different Phantom. Now it's hunting time. We know that only one is available. They're going to pass like ships in the night. They can't quite connect with the rest of the shots. Still Tyson gets one. Won't get a second. And that's another 4K for Seiyu. Eight kills in two rounds. This jet is coming alive. And so is North Quincy. I mean, he's going Super Saiyan. Like, there's nothing more to it. This guy's crazy these past couple rounds. Super Saiyan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, I don't think it's too much of a stretch. Sweeps out. <laughs> uh, WV, though. Let's see if they can turn this around. There's a lot of ultimates on the other side. NQHS, honestly, I like the opportunity, the idea of just, like, chucking every single one of these into this round, just saying, hey, you know, we've got you on the ropes. Economically, you've got nothing left. Let's fully commit into winning this one, but they spread out for a default instead, which is, you uh, you know, it, it's a perfectly fine choice. They should be all right regardless, but it's not the plan I would have gone with. Let's see what information they can get out of this default, though. Bit of Guardian desperation here from the Rainer. No one going to be detained. This Prodigy is going to try and make something happen here. Peachy moves through the shadows onto the point, and Prodigy is going to fall oh, down saw here. you, Both dude. Tyson Relax. And Prodigy, could they get the ace hit? There's... <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's oh, so anticlimactic. All right, let's go. NQHS not out of this yet. They've got Spike down. They're still winning the round. Peachy Wall through. bang on the turret. East 1v2. Draws out. Now around the corner. They see the Killjoy utility. They should be able to take it out. Should it get to that level, that situation. Ken's dropping, though. It's going to be so difficult. Because you have to drop directly on top of Peachy. Yes, that Omen is low. But he's still got bullets in the mag. Dawn now around the corner. Oh, no. Did they clear? They did. Oh, wait, no, they just took out the Killjoy. Okay. Wow, <laughs> that happened fast. Yeah, the Killjoy was taken out. And then they took a good double peek. An excellently timed swing from Dawn there. Making sure that there were going to be no heroics from hell. In this case, and the BBV earned themselves a stay of execution. The chance to play once again for that overtime. Still, it isn't pretty on the economy door. It's not pretty at all. I mean, it's more than they had last round. <laughs> last round. <laughs> They're only playing one Guardian this time. Yeah. A single Guardian round. I'm not sure it matters if it's on Prodigy. I mean, if you only click heads, it's not like you need more than the one semi-auto bullet. That's true. All right, let's see what they can get done. Around, back to the default for NQHS. Again, I'm not a huge fan of it coming out of them. Love this push by Prodigy. Even if you just take out the turret, that's fine. That's a lot of information. That's map control gained back. Now, look at this. Ray has to clear all these angles back in mid. Gets forced off by the Guardian. Ultimate's up for WBV. They're the ones with the lockdown in tow. This is this is not a bad position for the defenders, actually. So much map control is gained here over mid by the threat of that Guardian, right? So he's not going to be scared of it, though. The Phantom at longer range may not have that one tap potential, but does do plenty when it comes to taking those duels. Oh, <laughs> the hunt begins and it's ended very quickly there by Tyson straight at the door, but it's traded out by Bolt. We'll close down the door to enter the site and the dark cover will provide the obfuscation that's needed for a safe site plant from the Killjoy. Three players remain here for Wichita, so it's not impossible, but they're going to be stacking up here in gardens for their retake to try and maybe defend this lockdown. It's going to be taken out pretty early, most likely, by this Hunter's Fury. That's exactly what Bot will achieve, but not much more than that. Dude, Seiyu's being so mean. He's not even, like, pushing Garden. He's just chilling. He's like, I, as long as I'm alive, you are not allowed to win this round. And let you, these kills are nice. They come in. But yeah, say you at any given point in time could just peek that. There's no way you could watch it the entire time without getting double angled by another player. Excellently played post plant by NQHS. And it puts him up to a 1-1 one -one scoreline. And... I'm glad we got some heroics from Seiyu, right? We we needed someone on North Quincy to really be stepping up towards where we saw Lotus and Prodigy playing on Icebox. And, well, it feels like East and Seiyu have definitely started to slip into those doorless shoes when maybe their performance was, was slightly muted on our first map. Still, 
Now they managed to win one of their map picks. Now which are targets to pick? And I, I actually, I'm really curious to see where they take this because now they found yes, they want to get heavy heavy team. I, I honestly okay. think it's bind pick most likely, but they want to play execute heavy. But now they realize, hey, we've got prodigy in our back pocket. If you play an operator, it's not the greatest map for that. I think again, like you mentioned, the duelists are able to come alive on a set as opposed to any other map where you would kind of expect them to have a little bit less of an impact. But the question is for them. Now, what map minimizes Seiyu's impact while allowing Prodigy to pop off and giving you those executes? I think Bind kind of takes all of those boxes. We'll find out what we go to, though, after a quick little break. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. What's in Zaxby's new General So's sauce? Legendary chicken, legendary sauce. The new General So's boneless wings, only at Zaxby's. Redeem rewards, scan to pay, and order ahead on the Zaxby's app. be the sun for there will be no 3-0 valorant today we're in our grand finals and we are one to one we're guaranteed at least four maps but you know that dora and i are hoping for five however if we're going to go to five then wichita they need to find a way to guard themselves against Seiyu. Yeah, that's going to be a hard time unless that is you're trained in the Army National Guard where you could start a <laughs> career in exciting fields like science, technology, communications, engineering, and medicine, all while earning money to further your education. Get paid to learn skills in these high demand and rewarding professions, all while serving your nation, state, community, and country. To learn more about how you can become a citizen soldier, visit nationalguard.com. Beautifully done, Dor. You know what? I learned from the best. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe our, some of our players will opt in and they'll be guarding some of those flanks against that ever-invading jet player. And, well, <laughs> we remain in jet paradise because with a cerebral ban of Bind from North Quincy, we're not going to be able to go there. That's where we thought the Wichita would want to go, right? That, I mean, that was honestly, like, maybe if, if they win this thing, I think you might actually be able to pinpoint the whole thing down to that one ban. 
that was a, a really important man. That was such a good map for Wichita to try and go to. And you just snipe it right out from under them. Now, again, there's no real way to get away from either the Viper or the Jet. You kind of just have to pick the lesser of two evils. And they're saying, hey, you know what? We think we can take on the Jet. We'll take things over to Haven. I'm curious to see what Wichita can do. There's nothing more to get to, though, than to just hop right into it. It's going to be Haven for our map number three. We're going to have our agent selection coming up real soon. But yeah, like you said, they have to pick between two evils, right? On split, you might have to deal with a Viper. And on Haven, you're going to have to deal with the Jet. And that's one of the fastest locks I've ever seen. People don't lock Jet that fast in my pub games. Uh, Sayu does. I guarantee you every lobby Sayu gets into, Sayu locks Jet that <laughs> fast. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? You're not, you're not going to feel ripped off, though, right? When you get into that round with Sayu. We're going to see our first Cypher of the day interestingly from ray who has been playing very much in that sentinel role but also worth noting we have someone new in the lobby uh con has come in replacing dawn who previously was playing the omen that's now going to be taken up by prodigy who was playing the jet which is now going to be taken up by lotus who was playing the rainer which has now been taken up by kxns so a huge shuffle here from wichita you know, I think this, honestly, this whole shift is really good. You put Khan in to get a Cypher in, which I think is kind of the main point. But at the same time, you put Ken's in on Arena, which KXNS, I think we were corrected. This is the first time they've ever mentioned that that is how the name is pronounced. So sorry <laughs> if we still call you Ken's. It's kind of a... I, I would have really assumed if it was all caps, you know? When, yeah. when, 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 it's, uh, when it's smaller case, I'm like, that's a word. <laughs> that's a, Yeah, that's a name. It's Ken's. But, uh, you know, more love to you. We'll probably just call you both, but... That's life. <laughs> but we get Ken's over on the Reina where Ken's I, the entire season, the entire time the Q system up, Ken's was tearing it up on this Reina. And I think that might be the one thing in this lobby that is capable of taking down Sayu. I think you might be right. Especially with the capacity to take a peek, disengage with a dismiss. If you can get yourself a early frag, you can really make sure that Sayu's entries are going to be properly marked from off anguish try and take advantage of those 50 50s such as when you're moving through havana a maybe those sewers they could be an absolute death trap and uh i wonder if we're gonna see any play through that i wouldn't anticipate that the uh, it will be teason playing in there or bolt uh very rarely see the sovers playing those tight angles on a as far as i've seen in watching pro play i mean there's a lot of flexibility as to where you okay, feel with Sayu. <laughs> yeah. But uh it's just a first pick, it's not the end of the world. Pistols do matter a lot here though. Remember, these teams are, are taking control of the game very early with these first four rounds. Lotus comes up with another one, NQHS. Now more than ever, they feel like they have to make a difference. They feel like they have to take a peek somewhere, but Lotus is looking for three. You know, Lotus could make a diversion, try and get a ultimate orb later if they start getting more and oh, more of these kills on. because then they wouldn't have to buy a SMG in the second round. They could just play off a blade storm. Maybe use it in the bonus. Bolt caught with the owl drone out. That's going to be five. Oh. Might be the ace. Ray says no, but Ray can't deny four. Surely with a classic in hand, move through the smoke. They're not fast enough to deal with Prodigy and off the back of some impressive ghost play from that jet wichita they start off strong i like to think in my heart of hearts that ray said nay but <laughs> nevertheless lotus incredible round the shot through the smoke in uh in garage Sm some degree of fortune but the, the other three absolutely not Did you say really the prodigy on omen is the knight who slays nay or Ray Robin. <laughs> this is going too far. <laughs> yeah, we're getting in some deep, deep lore references exactly. right here. Exactly. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the real canon for this match. This isn't a Valorant game. Oh boy. Okay, weapons now. Nobody's nice dropped bounce. the second. Nobody's dropped the second round quite yet. Get out of my so I have uh, no real suspicions. These teams are solid enough that they're playing these rounds really, really clean. Lotus watching the backside as well. Ray goes for a push here. It's uh, curious to not see. A trap wire put uh -oh. up in his way, but it, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raise down. Quick rotate over. Attackers don't even have to worry about taking any specific side. It's not like you, uh, you're you too worried about any one position. You kind of want to avoid garage and avoid sewers as much as you can to avoid any uh, shorty angles. So you'll see a lot of these players are very naturally going to take out a long as opposed to going sewers. They might leave one to lurk behind, and that's exactly what the Omen's going to do to make sure there's no flank coming from that area. But they're never going to actually clear it from the, de or from the attacker's side. Oh, yep, yeah, they didn't see it coming. Lotus loves those close angles. With that blade storm, just go for a quick right click. 
Hasten going to look for that plant. Anticipating where it's going to be. Try and do some damage with a hot hands here. But Sayu going to have trouble making entries with this shorty. It's not going to be ideal for the engagement range. Ken's get more. And Lotus gets a couple for themselves as well. Beautiful play there. That's a flawless from WBV. And now moving into the bonus round. They might actually buy up to a pair of rifles here, especially with how much They're money Lotus has. Yeah. 6.4k. Oh They're going God. huge. These players are rolling in it, man. Yeah, just pick up some more weapons while you're at it. Lotus has been doing such a good He's job. He's still and... got the most weapon money. <laughs> The he's he's the been bonus. playing out of his mind though, and that's that's the big thing to look for here. Is Prodigy excellent job on the operator? I had I had very few problems with the operator play, but you're going on to Haven. It's a little less optimal, and as well, you're trying to play Con on the cipher. Like all of these agent changes work for Haven. You get a cipher up, you get Ken's on Arena to match, and you get Lotus on a jet where they can start making plays and maybe not trying to duel out necessarily. So yeah, all the time, but at the same time, having that same kind of more high impact style of jet play where you're a lot faster, you're playing at a lot closer range. That hot hands there. Imparted information that the Phoenix is likely trying to control Garage. Question is, do they wish to try and make a push off of it? For now, patience is the ally of Wichita. As Lotus slowly moves up. Maybe looking for some burst movement here with a cloud burst and tailwind. There it is. The tailwind not going to be used. And they are going to lose that on both their duelists. Sayu's got two. Bolt gets themselves another. But Con brought out the sidearm and got plenty done with it. Prodigy round the back. A little bit faster on the trigger than East. But can't get anything through that smoke. It was spray and pray. But you're going to have to pray a little bit harder with only 33 HP remaining. They're going to try and clear this forward angle here. They need to try and grab some information with what remains of their life as they play cheekily within this smoke. They see the paranoia come through, door, so they know that the omen is close by, but realizing the dark cover would dissipate soon, it's going to be a quick redo, and it's going to be a loss in the omen versus omen. Oh, just one, though. Con turns around, spots the other player. Doesn't spot him, but knows where he is, fundamentally. There's nowhere they else you really play the expect time. to be. They absolutely can. This ring around the rosy game is about as intense as they come. But Peachy, better weaponry, better player, comes up over top of Khan. Taking the first round up for NQHS. Again, breaking that streak of people coming away with rounds they absolutely shouldn't in these kind of situations. But with only one gun standing, they uh, they don't exactly have the economy to buy again. Yeah, it's going to be potentially some manner of force here. Still. Moving into our fourth round, Wichita, they're feeling very comfortable. They've got themselves a fully stocked armory. See a stinger on Ray, a frenzy even. This is going to be scrappy. It's going to be piecemeal. They're hoping for Peachy here to try and get maybe an early frag. Create a looter-shooter scenario. It, it, it's not a buy round, it's a looting round. <laughs> it's a, that's a new one. Here's the, I mean, it's, it's a perfectly valid idea. I think if any way they're, they're going to do that, it'd probably be through mid. Uh, collecting the weapons off of picks in other areas is significantly more difficult, but they're not playing the same double angle that they were last round. Sayu is around this corner, but I think Lotus is a, a little bit more wary of it than they were last round. The chance of that double angle being played. Yeah, it's, it's a short. He can get some work done, though. Look at this. They're trying to find Sayu around this corner. They just can't quite get the angle. I'll go see Owl Drone. <gasps> Might catch. Oh, that's some good covering fire right there. They wanted to catch the server while they were piling that drone around. But they have to get out of dodge for a second. They see Lotus staring down this area with the Vandal. I don't think that was quite the shock dart that was uh, wanted right there for our server. I think Tyson may have misaligned that. But still, Vastar, relatively bloodless as Cypher is all the way in the back towards window here with a spike in hand. And it looks like it may be a push towards B. I love how good of a job WBV have done of avoiding these shorties at any given cost. They understand what they're playing against, and they're playing to their advantage. Insight should be getting off the site. There's not much to stop them from holding this at a distance. Peachy, though, does manage to get on site scot free. Takes out two. Looking Peachy? for a third with the shorty. No, it's Prodigy. Locking things back down. 3v2, but one lower on HP than the rest. Oh, that should be it. Prodigy through smoke now. Low HP on both players. Say you can absolutely do this. Oh, they, they're not expecting the smoke push. There's no way. Oh, no. That's so good, Prodigy. Oh, yes. That was sick. Prodigy. Arm under pressure. Doesn't fall for the fake on the defuse. Playing some excellent omen right now. 
That's going to return us to potentially a full buy round right here. It's guns versus guns. And this could be a round door that sets economic precedence for so many rounds to come. Everything's on the line here. The lead in the game, the lead in the economy. And this is often where you find teams saying, hey, you know what? This is what we're most confident with. And right now it's WBV saying we're happy with our defaults. The push up though from NQHS, nobody saw Sayuga in this position. Uh, Prodigy is, in my mind, as good as dead. Oh, maybe not anymore. The sound's been made. They Should me raise old, the alarm bells for WBV. What? Prodigy's taking this angle. I don't know why. Okay, sure. I mean, got yourself a kill. That was an ambitious 1v1 to take on the jet though. Yeah, saw you there. I think maybe they could have faked that with the orb slightly. Try and bait in potentially a free kill. KXNS. Wants to try and play in garage, but... Caught with Valir in their hand. It's moved past them now, so they're not going to be near sighted, but... Season puts one between the eyes to make sure that they're no sighted. Moving now over towards C. Doesn't have a spike in hand, but it's right behind him in the hands of that Cypher. Tyson is winning Gundal after Gundal, but Ray is coming back as well. The combat Cypher, the hacker that you never saw coming. As Lotus, the top fragger, towards the back, loses out. Okay, Ray, I see you. That puts him up in the economy as well. Up to two points on the board, but the lead should be changing really rapidly. As those ultimates come on board as well to run it back. Honestly, maybe the most potent ultimate in this game right now, considering mm -hmm. that we don't have any lockdowns, any Viper's Pit, anything like that being tossed around. And QHS have a pretty good opportunity, but they lost a lot of weapons in that round as well. So it's uh, it's not exactly perfect. It's not all uh, peachy keen for them either. WBV. Run... Oh, the running back could lose a little bit of potency as well from this only light shield being applied to East. Just give it a little bit less in the way of staying power on that first life still. East going to be very keen as they move on forward here. Wants to claim as much space as possible, but they're not entirely quiet while doing it. Will not secure the kill. That was an unlucky spray onto that. Oh, speaking of unlucky, <laughs> not exactly the timing that they were looking for. Back to mid, WBV have very little control of this map. I think they're kind of just as worried as anybody else, especially with the fr from the from the darkness coming through, or from the shadow rather. There's very little space that is free for WBV. They don't know anything. They're trying to group back up, and normally in these three v three situations, they're better for the attackers by a pretty good margin. But right now, I wouldn't say that's exactly the case. I want to see them stick together, just play as three and try and catch somebody out because that's the best opportunity that they're going to have at winning this round but they've spread themselves really thin with 40 seconds left they're gonna have to take something pretty quick you got to think about that information differential as well right with the cypher not gonna commit to the teleport but left. they don't know that camera right now activated they don't see anybody over at a and now it's going to get a little bit noisy over at C. It's going to be picked up on here by Ray, who previously was an MVP for this team. That's going to be an attempt here to stop the plant with the Hunter's Fury, but they do not connect the second area. Prodigy is fast on their feet with the Sheriff, but doesn't have time to loot that weapon. So they're going to be remaining on the Sheriff, on the Revolver. But it's more than Ooh. enough. Go on, Prodigy. Give them the business. Peachy moves in. They've got themselves a rifle they've got themselves a paranoia they're going to be hit by the recon bolt and now they've got to win out the gunfight that's one can they get themselves a second they're not exactly on point with the rotation but it doesn't matter because they're fast enough to get it done it's going to be a defuse and it's going to be a heroic play from peachy welcome to the server been a bit quiet thus far but that was a performance and Prodigy put up the best fight, but Peachy even better. That 1v2 at the end was so close, especially with the drone having come out, right? You had a dart in you. There were so many problems with that that made it uncomfortable for Peachy, but Peachy comes out on top. It's crazy. This is only 3-3 in this game so far, and I feel like we've played a, a whole 24 rounds at this point. We've been here for thousands of years. <laughs> I've been on Haven for years. That sometimes feels that way. <laughs> I, like to, I like to imagine that they cut back to the caster cameras and you and I just have full gray beards, you know? <laughs> oh, man. I'll get to 102 and I still won't have grown a full beard. Yeah, it's unlucky. Bad times. <laughs> 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 He's going to scout these corners now. 
with the drone. Might catch a little bit of Peachy Shoulder, but no. Good evasion there from the Omen. Again, back to the default for WBV, though. And this mm -hmm. is it, seeming to be their kind of favorite play here. But I don't know how much I like it for him. It, it's letting NQHS get into a lot of really weird positions. Because NQHS like playing so on the fly, they're willing to do stuff like this. Like, look at the, the concentration of players over by Garage. It was Jet, uh, Sova, and Phoenix all in one spot. And you just if you just keep sitting back and playing your default... That leaves more time for you to just like accidentally run into one of those three man hit squads and just lose a bunch of players. And yes, eventually you're going to go somewhere. And the idea is that you get a read on where that is and then try to move where it isn't. But I don't think they've successfully managed to get a read on where that hit squad is really ever. Because right now it's in mid, it's in B. It's now shifting over as that jet goes over towards the A side. A little bit Ooh. of pressure towards mid draws it back. Now the A side's left open. It seems like this might have been successful for WBV, but. As they come back in, look, the Jet, the Cypher, almost already in position for the retake. Lotus gets on quick, but there's a lot of players surrounding this site. It, a lot of this is going to come down to the mid-fight, actually. Keep an eye on the Omens there and who's coming up from behind. It's Prodigy looking like they could get multiple get gas to get there quick, though. Oh, no. On taking out East. This is a bloodbath on the point. However, they still have that omen on the flank. They didn't see Prodigy coming. Will they be able to win the gunfight? They've got themselves two, but they're caught reloading. And Peachy once again comes out on top. The last ghost standing. And you know what? They're doing a bloody good job of playing this omen. You you might kick yourself here if you're Prodigy, right? You had the angle on Peachy coming through B. You had the trigger discipline to not reveal your location on the flank. But that meant that there was a fully reinforced push with the paranoia, with the dark covers to try and get the retake on A. I mean, I think it was the right play for Prodigy. The timing was just a little bit unfortunate. I don't think there was a timing where Prodigy actually gets... Like, I either get traded out and then they push back in with two, which is fine for them. Or you try and make that play and try and get three at the end. Both are, I mean, absolutely valid ways to play the situation. And holding for mid was a great idea. It just didn't work out for him. And now it's NQHS. Back in the lead of the game. Quick shot on to Zayu, though. Lotus seems to be kind of just the bane of Zayu's existence this game. Oh, Prodigy. I, know exactly I thought he was about to do it again. I oh, he's about to do gone. it again. <laughs> Bolt needs to try and hold down mid, but surprise, surprise, they aren't coming. A retreat here towards C Long. It's going to be Cypher who's trying to take over that angle. Peachy teleports on top, but guess who's waiting? But Prodigy He's not going to miss this time, I can assure you. And remember, when it comes to post plants here, if Tyson remains alive, they can just sit back with that Hunter's Fury. However, they will be caught out here by Ray, who can't quite secure the kill, but now will get themselves two. Con won't be caught on the disengage as Ray stands alone. Prodigy is ready and Prodigy is set to go four to four. I actually love that con turn tail. It looked a little funny, you know, like he's running away, but it was absolutely the right play. You just don't give the player the 1v1, right? That's your entire goal mm -hmm. in that play. Uh, Prodigy goes and takes a 1v1 afterwards, making it kind of null and void anyways, but Prodigy's kind of on fire that round, so you can't take it away from him. <laughs> Both omens are top fragging right now. Who needs duelists? Yeah, right, uh, that's what I'm saying, man. Just put a bunch of uh, put a bunch of smokes on a team. See how it goes. <laughs> the the old the old brimstone omen viper. Do we count the viper as a smoker now? I... Yeah, it's enough. It has one more Mo moderate smoker. <laughs> they're 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 they're, uh, they're a nicotine gum. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the default. These rounds have been really really slow, man. WBV have taken their sweet time every single one of them. And I think they're trying to catch Sayu off guard, but Sayu hasn't really pushed that much, like, every once in a while. And I guess if, you know, it wins you one out of every five rounds just off the bat, it's not a bad way to play the game. But if you continue to do this, Sayu's just not going to peek you. Like, they, I think at this point, NQHS have kind of realized what's going on and just say, hey, you have to come take this space eventually. Come to us. Yeah, like, we can wait. We we win if you do nothing for a minute and 40 seconds, right? <laughs> Jason's going to try and clear through Garage here with the owl drone won't be able to catch much because guess what lotus is catching bolt elsewhere catches say you shoulder is able to follow through and like you said lotus is proving to be the bane of sayu so many times peachy caught with a knife out trying to loot that weapon con says nah mate that's mine nah, ray's done dude ray's done oh, that was quick reaction time but no 
It's not enough. I, if there's one thing I think that might just win WBV, possibly this whole thing, it's their economic control. When WBV wins rounds, it is more often than not with three plus players alive, whereas on the mm -hmm. NQHS side, they're winning these rounds in clutches almost every time. Peachy's done it like three times this game. 1v1s out the wazoo. They have been just scraping by, and it leads to things like this, where they just barely have buys. Look, at it's four to five. Yet, WBV are so this different. far ahead in economy. Yeah, it, this is not how it should go. Yet, WBV are winning their round so consistently with so many players alive when they do. It shows us how cleanly they're able to leverage that man advantage. This is what you expect out of Wichita, a team that is bar none, the most organized that we have here at HSCL. They are going to play some really clean Valor, and that's what this wins you. Well, let's draw that back to what we've seen before. Sayu on the back there. Not letting me make my point because Lotus decided to take that peek against the Aldro. However, not quite good enough. Peachy's going to stand up in the corner. And Wichita find themselves down one. However, still fairly winnable. A good amount of damage was taken by that Sova while they were piloting the drone. But you know what? Better to be have a weak Sova than a dead jet. Remember to use that G-Force overlay. <laughs> I wondered if I hit it by accident for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. A take though is a bit of a problem for NQHS. On a lot of pressure, a lot of utility used though by the attacking side. They've committed heavily this and they still lost a player on their way in. Now, utility's here for NQHS on the retake. Oh, but Prodigy's in a great position. Fortunately, sprayed through the smoke by Bolt 2v4. It's not unwinnable. For the attackers right now but it's not a great situation to be in ace goes down though and that's the foot in the door they needed two players stuck in heaven how do they drop down here i felt like that's the first time i've seen a, a flash in one of these fights from east not been the most effective phoenix thus far but you know what ray has been holding it down again and again on this cypher but like you said door they only got out with two guns when wichita win they win big and when North Quincy win, they clutch. They win small? Is that a... Is that a can, can we they, say? They, they a win adequately. <laughs> this is... Uh, it's less than adequate, I would say. I mean, Moderate look, 2K win. on Sayu doesn't have cash. They're Duny play win. <laughs> they're playing for an ult orb here. And that's a, that's a little sad to see. I'll be honest. Look, they're going to push out towards C to try and get there. Sayu's actually not there to collect the ult orb, which is... Come on. No. Reyna, Reyna, put that down. Put that down. Let Sayu get it. <laughs> did they? Wait, I think they might. I don't think they did. I think they picked it up for Empress. That's a little sad to see. Now Sayu doesn't have a weapon. It's kind of 4v5 pushing back into this. And QHS have all the players alive, but they get back in in time. Sayu's got the ultimate online. Ken's down. 4v4. Feels like this is a story as old as time in this matchup. Sayu with a blade storm and a dream. Bolts. Getting one onto Khan. No more additional information, but no more flashes, no more hot hands either as the Phoenix has been taken out, but Sayu isn't done yet. Drafts on forward. Gonna look for a right click. They're gonna secure it, but remember that Tyson is in the back looking to try and take out on that defuse. It's baited, but Ray is aiming down range, and Ray aims well. And QHS. They maintain the motif of only two alive, but a round win is a round win as we head into our final round of the half. This could really make the pace of the rest of the game change so much who wins this round. A tied half is very different from a 7-5 half on Haven. It changes how you have to play the attacking side, whether you have to be creative or whether you can kind of play your own game. WBV have played this default style pretty much the entire time, and I think it's no real surprise that it breaks out relatively even. It's Hard to get a read on what they're going to do, but it is more easy. Uh, it is a little easier, rather, to counter things when they do go for them is the, the trade-off that they're making. If, mm -hmm. that is, NQHS get the read. All right, now, NQHS going for a, a very stylistic play of stacking up this garage, throwing some members in it. There's one out, gets one onto Lotus, and no map control has been gained for WBV. Look at this. Said, Prodigy's pushed up on a C, but it doesn't actually, like, yeah, it's going to be an easy trade for them to get back. That's not real map control. It's just you running into the other side of the map. That's a change in style as well from East. If you remember, the last time that they made that play with the run it back, they didn't actually flash themselves out. It meant that they were taking a little bit of uh, additional damage as well. Tyson managed to win out that fight. 
now four versus three a little bit more doable for wichita they want that six to six and they have not lost control of a spike it's still in the reliable hands of con maybe they could try and get themselves an ult orb here but it would be quite uh quite a risk to do so so he takes out teeson the Empress is active right now for KXNS. They're going to be the primary door, so they have to do it all by themselves. They know that the Omen's going to be here. They get hit with a Paranoid. That isn't going to stop them. Near Sight still gives them the ability to fire that rifle. They come out of the ether. And you know what? A bolt from a blue is also going to be flying their way. 7-5 to five for North Quincy. Now remember, this was a map pick for Wichita, even if it wasn't the one they maybe wanted. It feels like map pick just doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah, because... Their... Now you have to go up, if you're going to split, you have to go up against that Viper, right? Yeah, and, well, that's the thought, is, like, you have to go up against the Viper, and all of a sudden something random is going to come out that just gives WBV the advantage, it feels like. Like, you just never know what's going to make the difference. Yeah, we've Nobody... got Yoru strats on Bind. Yeah. We've been studying Korea VODs. <laughs> Nobody saw Prodigy coming with the Operator in that first round. I think the game hasn't been the same ever since, even on Ascent. Everyone had, uh, had their wits about them. With who's going to come out on top. This game, yeah, it's going to be WBV's map pick, but Peachy all of a sudden is on top of the kill feed. And Sayu, yes, has been playing well, but is down at the bottom with a, a couple of impact frags to their name. It's all default, though, for NQHS. They're trying to play that flexible game that they're good at. I want to see WBV get a little adventurous here, send some one, two-man hit squads up for some aggressive pushes, but knowing them, I kind of doubt that's what we get. Prodigy. Playing in garage right now. And they can see where that dark cover is coming from. They know exactly who's going to be here. And maybe knowing that this implicitly means there will be a frenzy waiting in the corner. But Peachy's going to be playing exactly the same. Turning this corner. Removing the smokes from this pistol round could be one of the most important duels we'll see on Haven. However, they'll send out the blind first. That's perfect. But neither of them check for Prodigy. You can't get the blind on the two-man squad and neither of them check what? that corner. Okay. Unreal. It's such a good position for the defenders now, but back to 3-3. Three three. They've managed to trade all of these out, regaining that garage control. Jet duel. More's the back. Lotus. They have been Sayu's Bane, and Sayu doesn't have the health for a protracted engagement. Oh, they've got they the aim, though. need a long one if they're going to get the headshot, though. Bolt's still in. Oh, Prodigy's got no health. Poor guy. He's, gonna, he's just going to get shot through smoke. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. They knew exactly where he was. 8-5 to five NQHS. Take... I will hesitantly call this a commanding lead. In terms of this <laughs> series, this is a commanding lead. But grand scheme, not really. It's only three points. See if they can change this up, turn it into one more. For WBV to, to kind of change the status quo, though, here and come away with a pistol or an eco round on second would be uh, literally match changing. Unreal. If it could happen. Oh, look at this. We're get. I, I love the gamble. Okay. Uh, Sova, Jet playing in Garage. One of them might get sent forward here. Lotus, what you got? Oh, it's a missed shot, but I love the idea. This this tells me that WV is willing to think a little bit more outside the box right now, which is exactly what I want from them. No damage taken thus far. Guy who's going to be given a warning shot or two, likely a body shot there from a Sheriff. As Bolt sends it through the smoke, checks for corners. Likely anticipating, but something cheeky could come through. Maybe a shorty. I believe that is what the Omen has in hand here, Prodigy. But they could have changed their loadout. Maybe it's instead, it is for Classic. And <gasps> what a shot from Prodigy. Leeson's, uh, Teeson's going to be able to do the same thing, taking out Sayu. That is a couple of weapons off the board right here. Those could be looted later into the round if things start to calm on down. KXNS going to lose out on that one. But Teeson, he's a maestro with this Classic. Still, those weapons are going to be well within the sights of both of these Spectre-wielding Manix that are currently on North Quincy. East gets themselves a third and finally seeing some value out of this Phoenix. He took their time with it, but they're going to get it done with a 4K as they secure a ninth round here for North Quincy. I think now is a great time to, to point back out that NQHS have not won their rounds particularly cleanly. It's scrappy for them, and now they don't get a bonus round. They're stuck with having to force up into rifles on the third round. You see a couple of them on half armor. It's not the greatest buy. WV are looking to capitalize as best they can. They bought a little bit into that last round. But look at this. They know what they're going into. They know they don't have to fully commit. This is not it for them. They just need to take weapons away. Make sure this doesn't get too out of control. They're not at panic mode yet where they're like, hey, you know, we have to win all these rounds. They understand they've got 
four more to go before they lose the game and they're actually using them really wisely kind of allocating them and saying hey we're gonna play for our economy not necessarily for the win right now they do have themselves to run it back it'd be very impactful one of the two rifles that has been purchased by nqhs is in the hands of east on that phoenix could be used to claim garage control but seems like we're finally getting ourselves a rush we haven't seen too many heavy-handed executes thus far Oh, no, the trap wires are starting to ruin them. Sayu's going to dash in here. I can almost guarantee it. Waiting for it. No, no dash into hell. Dashes away. Takes two out with them. And QHS, excellent take, but they haven't found out Lotus quite yet. Love this angle right outside the smoke, but it's caught out by Ray. Great pre-fire as well. 2v2 now, and somehow we just continually end up in these dead even situations, but it's each pushing through the smoke they're not ready for. And QHS win the round, but with two alive, they're not going to have money to spend next round. And WVV absolutely are. There is going to be the capacity for a slight buy from Wichita. But do they want to invest that much? That's, I mean, it was their plan from some last light? round. They, they didn't full buy last round with full intention of saying, hey, we're going to damage the opposing economy then so that we get ahead now. Take a look at the buys. I mean, they all have cash to spare. They should have a, an actual economy following this. So, yeah, they've lost the past couple rounds, but they actually won economically. Mm-hmm. Still... Likelihood is this round going to go the way of the superior weapons, but it's it's an investment in the future. They're buying Tesla in 2018. <laughs> KX and S, if they could get a nice headshot here. They know there's so much presence, but they can't quite connect. Seiyu brings in the pressure and is only going to continue throwing out, but Lotus for counter to Seiyu that was promised. And look at this. Essentially a one-way cyber cage right now here with Ichi's current position. It's going to be so difficult to retake into that and... Not the cyber cage that you were expecting, was it? Not what he wanted, that's for sure. 3v3 though, NQHS still in the, not the cleanest of situations. Lotus is in. The weapon re damn. WBV are coming for this round. 2v1. East could spray down both these players with just a couple of bullets. Doesn't get the transfer. It's Lotus over top who takes away the win and keeps WBV's hopes alive. A counter to say you that was promised to me did this thriftily. With only sheriffs and a couple of looted phantoms, one of those will be staying in the hands of Lotus. Means they'll be able to build up a considerable piggy bank for themselves. And like you said, those rounds, they were an investment in the future. Even with only one of their players surviving through to that win, they have now managed to place themselves into a full rifle by round. Say you. 2,800 credits in hand but they do have a blade storm so no need to really make that buy if you're confident enough and hey you're playing jet so you need to be confident right such is the idea but so is winning <laughs> we all like winning some of us i mean there I, there's got to be somebody out there who's like yeah losing it's my thing but, maybe it's uh, the kind of person who's like selfless and just wants other people to enjoy things yeah like, yeah yeah you know you know what five people just enjoy to win against me and i count that is my own win. <laughs> that, that's how I get my Ws. You need those selfless humans in your life. How goes the owl drone? Teason keeping it scouted, but they are going to lose a plating on those doors. Going to be the omen ultimate prodigy. Identifies the incoming potential push, but has to avoid this blade storm right here. Say you doesn't identify the threat and prodigy is more than happy to take it out. Throws out the emergency paranoia, but it's an absolute panic. Loses out against Peachy, even though the near sight was inflicted. Waiting for the plant now. It's going to come through from east as Tyson makes sure that the lurk from Ray will not be surviving for long. 9 HP and a dream. The defenders have themselves a man advantage. The Lotus can't secure that one onto Peachy. And Tyson plays from the back now. This could turn around here. WBV managed to make it work. And well, we talked about that three round lead. Three people surviving as well. It's slowly starting to evaporate, Dor. That, that's what I expected to happen. It, they've done such a good job economically in this half. Yeah, they fell behind, but it was kind of okay in a way. Like, you don't want to mm -hmm. give up three rounds, but if you're ever going to give up three rounds, you give it up the way the WBV have. And QHS... Have still got some economy going for them. But what can they turn around in their favor here? Very little. The uh, old, think... If I'm going down, your economy's coming down with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're trying to drag them down alongside. Economic kamikaze. 
<laughs> Valid strat. I think though, honestly, like with these weapons out, this is like a this could be a potent round if they go fast. But historically, they've played the default and they've played it very slowly. This camera is going to give them plenty of time to react if NQHS don't go quickly. So I want to see them put the pedal to the middle, get past this trap wire, and really effectively deal with Con here. Oh wait, the recon bow. I think it's inside the dark cover so maybe it won't give as much information as they were hoping the trap wire has been triggered right here con can't quite take out Sayu, but lotus is gonna finish the job the blade storm out now but they can't connect because east is coming through the other side a phantom picked up a flash may be thrown out the curveball is going to be imperative here to making sure that moving through from the link is going to be difficult Tyson sends out a quick scout out goes for paranoia they know exactly where east is but they're not quick enough on, on the tracking Bolton East hold it down and, and North Quincy they finally get out of this with a couple of members I mean it's not too uncommon for them to get out with a couple of members it's about getting away with more than a couple of members but their economy building nonetheless because they've won a lot of rounds this half 11 to 7 double digits versus single there's still economy in the bank for WBV but it, it feels that even when they the rounds are close like NQHS they're, they're still winning them right if you don't have an economy and you're still winning rounds, I guess it's all right. Like, it's not it's not the end of the world. Let's be real with ourselves. Absolutely true. At the end of the day, it's only the number at the top that matters and getting it to 13. Once again, a push towards A. They're being quite loud with this. They may decide to fake out later. Keep an eye on the Phoenix that they left behind as well. It's going to hold behind them. They know that this is relatively retakeable for WV. And they won't even have to play the rethink. They just connect the shots from outside the site. Players He's just throwing pot shots at one another. Oh, KXNS has been an absolute hero here. Just standing in the hot hands while receiving healing. Thinking that, hey, they think I'm zoned right here. But I'm receiving healing from my devour. So I can stand in this hot hands. And they'll take a peek that they're unprepared for. Excellent no. cerebral play there from Verena. What a turnaround for KXNS who has been... I think it's fair to say quiet this round compared to Lotus's previous Rainer efforts. But then again, WBV, they've been a little bit scrappy all the way through when it comes to Haven. Yeah, I'm actually, I've been impressed with Lotus. I think Lotus can play really whatever they want and they'll be all right. But I love having them on the jet. I think Prodigy's done a pretty solid job on it. Pretty solid job on the Omen. Has done an top excellent job on the yeah, top frag Omen. And it doesn't need the operator. If you want to go to a map like Breeze, yeah, put, put Prodigy back on the jet, get him an operator in hand. But outside of that i think they're sitting more than pretty with the combination of players that they have it's more a question of are they able to figure out their way through these rounds because the post plans have not gone their way on this map specifically and i'll tell you what there's a lot of maps like this where you're going to be playing a lot of retakes where you're going to be playing a lot of post plants and i'm not sure that fares too well for them let's see if they can find their way through this three round deficit again it looks like they can put themselves up two players traded out for one prodigy gets one more on the way out four versus two now as just East and the remaining Sova here are kind of forced into a corner. Prodigy exhibits no fear of a teleport coming through. They managed to cross over, potentially unnoticed, but retreating to the cubby right now will be the Sova. But Prodigy got them pinned on top of this spike. Knows exactly where they will be. Still not fast enough, though. Bolt manages to take that one. They've got themselves a two versus one but they have a hunter's fury lotus is down what a flick from bolt excellent play opening up garage goes for plant remember they can retreat to a safe distance here use the hunter's fury from relative safety potentially oh, i'm not sure they can cancels the drone i think he's trying to bait a peak coming from that one side can't get it cone finishes things off one point closer wbv are mounting the comeback Albeit at a slow pace, NQHS have not really let the tensions die down at all. They have kept this game as slow as humanly possible. WBB are trying desperately to speed things up. You can tell these early round peaks are going for advantages. They're trying to find spots early on into the round to win. NQHS have tried everything in their power to deny it. They've been winning the late rounds. They've been turning it around after that. They've been playing defaults as much as they possibly can. And now WB feel like they are large and in charge. Feel like they're in control of this game. And they buy an operator to top things off. NQHS, I'm getting the sense that they want to speed things up this round. It'll likely be a quick play on to A. But that'll be quickly countered by this operator. Nobody's seen this yet so far. Lotus, it's a free kill for him. The value door of strategic variety. 
not expecting the operator in that place and they lose out on one of their duelists because of it east heading south for now kxnx needs to hold this one down lotus goes for another one with the op Peachy's taken down but sayu will win out in the jet versus jet duel the plant will still come through but it's very scrappy at this moment all three ultimates are available for NQHS. They're going to use that Cypher ultimate. The Neural Uplink will give away the location of Tyson. And now, Sayu. Oh, they're creeping. The boy's creeping. Get themselves a 4K here. A Frenzy in hand. Will it be out the rifle? Oh, what an economy there for Bolt. Grabs themselves the Phantom. Thanks for the gun, bro. 12 points. Match point or map point right here. For NQHS. Everything looks so good for WBV as well. They bought the operator. They came into that round saying, hey, we are in charge of the pace of this game. We are going to pick you off early. They oh, did so beautifully. Lotus got two of them. But then it just gets turned around because Sayu just frags like a madman. Like, this happens every single time. WBV are playing these early rounds so well. But it doesn't matter because NQHS just don't stop fragging at the end of the day. And these sight takes have been gorgeous from them. And I feel like to not get a 13th round here would be a tragedy for them. But WVV have got those sheriffs in hand, and they're looking to do some damage. Spectre Ooh. through Sayu low, but it's Ray coming away with the kill. Yeah, just double spammed by Vandals through that doorway. They are either going to die from blood loss or suffocation with the amount of lead that was flowing their way. Lotus with a single knife. It has to be the one-shot headshot. Otherwise, it's back to the sheriff on this match point round. Four versus four. Look at how low... The jet from NQHS currently is. Sayu is going to be consistently pressured here. We've only that 24 HP to try and get something ha to happen by surprise. They need to be wary of the wallbang's door. Khan has the best position to do anything about this alongside Ken's. Ken's did something from this position last time. I believe three frags. Coming out from just the defender spawn. Take their sweet time. Peaks it early. That's the first. The rated train begins. Over top. Lotus can't get anything. Ray onto Khan. It's still KXNS though. Looking for more. Peaks around site. Back. Cyber Cage. Ken's is ready for it. Sayu down. It's just Ray now to hold on this round. It's for all of the beans. But he doesn't have a sightline on Tizen. And of course KXNS is able to finish it off. Keeping WBV alive. What a performance from the Rainer. From a ramshackle by. A pauper's round. Spectres. Ramshackle sheriffs. A single knife in the hands of Lotus after popping that blade storm. Kens gets it done with the trusty Phantom. I believe they handed off a Phantom to someone else there and have bought their own. Some good economic reinforcement for their team. The con is still going to be stuck on the Spectre. Alas, it's still a better buy than we currently see from North Quincy, who have a couple of mulligan rounds here, or at least one mulligan round. Yeah, at this point, if you're North Quincy, there's no mulligan rounds in your head. This is <laughs> as tense as it gets. I mean, these past couple games have been so close. To lose this one, it's to have this come back against WBV would be absolutely brutal to take as the, the team that starts out ahead. NQHS, you can feel the nerves. They're playing it so slow. They're so timid in this kind of situation. And I'm curious if... I mean, do they have the... Oh, 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 I thought for a second he got away with that. He didn't. And I don't know if Prodigy knows he didn't get away with it. I think he does. Likely knows. No one wants to be the person who makes an entry and dies. But... Somebody had to be. Penetration right there. They reveal Sayu. They get rid of the Blade Storm. And 6 HP for Ray. Breathe on him, and you'll die. A shock dart doesn't quite get the respiration that was needed to destroy Ray, but the rest of it is still going to be a threat. And think about it, going up against the rifles here, this isn't the ideal engagement range for the Spectre, but it's the one that Bolt has. I mean, you can feel the nerves for NQHS. It was the missed camera. It was the missed shots coming out from Sayu. This is very uncharacteristic of them. They can feel the pressure mounting. WEV behind in points, but the morale feels so high for them. Tyson's on site. Can shut this whole thing down. And there he has. 
gets two. Teeson, can you bring us more? Phantom in hand has to reload, but guess what? It's Lotus coming through. The flower power doing more than enough to bring us 12 to 11. Overtime is on the horizon door. We have been graced with such an intense grand finals here at our HSEL Spring Major. This could so easily be a very, very long overtime. <laughs> Good. W <laughs> WBV, what have you got for us? Uh, that's all I'm curious about. As defenders, they have a lot of precedent to, to kind of shift up how they play this. And they have, look at this. Two members playing on C, one in garage, one in B with a quick rotate over to C. This is a full lead and something we haven't seen out of them. A team that plays tight, a team that doesn't like taking risks. This is a gamble. And on the other side, NQHS set up in a semi-default, but everything is screaming. They want to go towards this C site, which again, is stacked to the brim with players. All was quiet on the western front. An attempt to bait out with that orb. Bolt has a good crosshair placement, but no, they'll just get away with the additional point of ultimate charge. And that is going to give East that all-important access to the run it back. This Hunter's Fury has been held on to for what feels like years from NQHS's Bolt. Sayu losing out there on the one-way peak to Lotus, but will not lose their life. Oh, I love the push from Prodigy. It's such a good idea. Just couldn't connect the shots. Peachy, better on the day. Not one man up, but there's no heal to get this omen back up. That is still a, a one bullet player at most. Got to connect something, but the quick push on to C now. They know that player's not there. They want to execute to get on. It's a little ragtag, though. Hands. Look at how far the Cypher is. Look at how far the jet is away from this. If WBV push it quickly, that could very, very easily take the legs out from under this push. Did they consider it cleared after the hot hands for smoke meant that Lotus's movement was not telegraphed? But look, they're gonna bring out their blade storm, but Sayu is on the back as they always are with this jet. They're still having to deal with Lotus, and you know what? Ray's gonna be the one to do that. There are only a couple of seconds remaining. They need to claim the frag, but no. Hanging out in the back. You know what? That's a win for me. Time was not on the side of a slow play style of NQHS. And patience there from Con was all that was needed. And now everybody takes a deep breath. We head into overtime. It's two in a row to win for either of these sides right now. NQHS, WBV for match point. What's the setup? NQHS back onto their default. No surprises here from what they want to be running. Omen on C, Silva in Garage, Jet set up in mid to play alongside the Phoenix. Uh, I'm curious to see where the, the Jet and Phoenix rotate, which one of them plays the rotate, but outside of that, there's nothing too crazy. WBV played the default their entire attacking side. Looked like they want to do that again. Stop any potential garage pressure that'd come out from the Phoenix or the Jet. Neither team allowing either to, to really pull out any shenanigans. They're making sure this is a scot-free round for either side. Just really clean Valorant. And so far, that's all it's going to be. It's going to come down to the execute like day. It's honest. It's Valorant. Identifying the, uh, the tripwire there as well, most likely. Means that they know how this execute needs to happen in terms of modifying incoming utility. They'll still have to deal with that cyber cage. Now remember, that may give Ray an early opportunity here for a pick. But the Phantom will not give a one-shot headshot at this range. Full retake for NQHS. No ultimates up on deck. Utility-wise, not too much going for either side. Health bars are full. Just wait for the smokes to clear. The and same thing again. Can get something from behind. Is the timing there from this time? I've got the strangest sense of deja vu, but hopefully this time Prodigy is going to catch Bolt. Yes, they will. While well, they're in their drone, but you know what? One person caught in utility is traded for another. Bolt trying to make this work, but looks the wrong way. And East is going to put a couple of bullets in the head. The Hot Hands is going to try and force out Khan and Sayu getting themselves a Blade Storm at the end, but it doesn't really matter. All that matters is for 3K and the Duelists of North Quincy come out on top. And now the pressure's on for Wichita. Wonderfully played post plant for NQHS WVV. Can you match it? On their own defensive side, I, I can't say that, you know, one side has been better on defense or attack one way or the other. It looks like they've been dead even the entire way through. 
normal. So I, I think away time. this has less to do with individual play. This has less to do with team play. This has so much more to do with can these teams keep their cool in these kind of situations. I suspect we're going to see a very similar round to what we saw last. Very honest play coming out from both sides. Lotus, though, look at this. And Garage may push this. I don't think we've no. seen a single sewer lurk this entire time. No. We've been very careful of trying to get rid of any glass cannon operators who may try and play down a long here. Con just going to play it safe. Would have been destroyed through the wall. However, feels like thus far they've not identified the camera and it's going to be a fake now. However, the rotational response from WBV is not overwhelming. They're still holding their ground and they were confident that the two players there could stall out long enough if it turned out to be a full push. Oh my goodness. Prodigy finds Seiyu. But we're going to be traded out here by Ray and Lotus going down. That is disastrous. Decent. No, in a beautiful position to get two. Numbers are even. Health bars are not. Ray, can you find a body just in time? I think that neural theft was going to run out of time. The body was decaying. Find out where both the players are. Knows they don't have to worry about players coming from behind them anymore. Just holds the angle. 19 HP. Gets one. That's beautifully done by Ray. But bolts around the corner. Versus Ken's the best. Fragger that they've got WBV send them up keep the thing even and we go further into overtime double overtime baby this is what the people at home want and what Wichita was hoping for and that Empress at the end is just a bonus as we switch sides once again we could be on Haven for years door we took we we said we felt like we've been on Heaven for years as we entered our seventh round we are now on round 27. I don't have too many problems with that. Lotus does, though, apparently. Lotus. I'm bad at counting, so it's a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're reaching the upper level of my mathematical prowess. He, he ran out of fingers, toes, and uh, in my like, keys <laughs> to count, you know? And other digits for only British people. <laughs> yeah. I like to think you just have, like, tiny fingers on your fingers. <laughs> Fraxel fingers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back to overtime, though. Default again. I, look, two players playing in mid, not too crazy. East and the Sayu just both ready to play rotate to either of their respective sites. There is just nothing crazy going on. Both of these teams refuse to break the status quo. They have so much respect for one another. And it's not necessarily that it's the right move to break that, but it is something that I just want to know. Like, what happens if somebody pushes here? What happens if somebody goes for the play? It's interesting that Ray has considerably swapped up their position from where they were previously defending A in heaven. Now they're playing from behind that Radianite box and having a little bit of earlier information from the A long. Oh my goodness, Seiyu catching Ken's off guard. And that recon bolt, that demands attention. Seiyu doesn't want to risk being peaked early by Lotus because they know just how difficult that can be. Tyson needs to move, but on the edge of that hot hands will basically survive. A second of these flashes will come through, but Seiyu is unable to follow it up appropriately. Starts out so much utility being used in mid here, and they quickly turn it into a garage push. I love this. Pivoting off the back of that pressure they had, they drew three people in towards mid WV. Try and turn it into a C push. The blind is gorgeous, though, by the defenders. Unfortunately, it only amounts to so much. 3v3 now for the post plant, but they got to get that spike down, and they cannot afford to get into even remotely decent positions for this. Bolt. Going to send up a drone first. Try and get some of that information. They are going to find the other server casting. I think they may have missed the bolt. That's going to be a wow. lot of kills in very short order. The 4k from Lotus and suddenly WBV. They're the ones on map point. Look Lo at how far they've come. Look at those blues. In the... Like there was a point at which they were what? 12 to 9? Lotus has gone absolutely gigantic over the course of this game. Frags out the where you bomb. couldn't believe. Yeah, 30 is up. I mean, 30 is not that crazy for this many rounds in, but it, it's about being under pressure and being able to do that. A 4K in a round like that is invaluable to this team, to their morale, to feeling like you can win this damn thing. Now pressure on for NQHS. They're firing a lot of bullets in mid, but nobody has taken a step forward. This team is mortified of possibly losing this and being taken to match point. Good tag. Two of them, in fact. Both East and Seiyu feeling a little bit trepidatious. Ray is going to return fire here through window. Still, no sewer shenanigans. The ciphers reliable on that A hold. 
question is do you want to risk anything here we've seen fast pivots through garage but right now that is under lock and key from Bisova. and once again quincy they're burning a little bit of time here to try and generate an opportunity timer is a bit of an issue and qhs has had problems with this in the past waiting too long to make their play 45 seconds on and this team has not made any space towards a or c any space towards a or c they're gonna try and pivot into something i think prodigy garage is. pressure might be their best bet but like that's hard to get past tson prodigy's inside this smoke we'll have to back out in just a moment the smoke is about to clear i believe no the timing's perfect Prodigy's good for one make it two man advantage now defenders are in kx and s in a beautiful position tson as well the map control so little for nqhs and their passiveness with their tail between their legs they're gonna have to send themselves on to another map wbv take themselves up to match point what a powerful lurk there from prodigy knew that they were gonna they were gonna be forced by that timer to make their move and they were so scared of lotus who had so much presence at b that the rotation to see long looked like the obvious move oh there's just a smoke here that's normal will there be an open inside it we've tracked this smoke we're pretty sure it's gonna dissipate soon Surely he's not inside it. They don't even check the corners as they go through. I mean, it, you're, the time's low. The pressure's high. Your heart's pounding. Your palms are really, really sweaty. Like, your mouth is slipping. Like, that's the time when you're not going to check those corners. When the nerves are that high. Prodigy is feeling confident. Understood they didn't have any map control. Understood the pressure they were under. Knew he could trade himself out for at least one. And like I said, that smoke timing. I was like, I, I saw it go up. And I was like, I'm, this, thing's, this thing's just about to pop it had it it's popped risky. the second earlier prodigy was done like that that would have been it but the timing was just enough for prodigy to get two teammates come in sweep things up a win for wichita buffs varsity and that's them sending themselves on to match point we love a good winner door that's why we need everyone to stay tuned for the intel winners circle <laughs> an invitational <laughs> tournament beginning on june 14th and running through the 25th where some of the best esports teams nationwide will compete for over five thousand fifty thousand dollars pardon me i can't read zeros that's, in more, that's more that's more zeros that's a lot more including a guaranteed one thousand dollars in scholarships to every participating school's esports team the matches for the top teams in Overwatch, Valorant, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will be streamed live on Twitch here at twitch.tv forward slash Generation Esports. So make sure that you're following for that big event. Yeah, there's lots of reasons to come. Plenty of good esports we have, but there's more esports tonight to be played. Valorant may or not be ending in the next map. Wichita looks to end things. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. This one is going to be good. <laughs>
appreciate the patience during the break, but we're back with map number four of the grand finals. And boy, oh boy, it's been a tasty one, but it's been a long one as well. And you know what you do when you're hungry and you need tasty stuff? Like they, where, what do I do? Well, where, you particularly, because you're in Florida. I, I, <laughs> I do live in Florida. Can, can, can visit a Zaxby's. Me, oh. however, I, I'm going to have to be jealous from here in the UK. <laughs> but you know why I'm jealous? I'm jealous because Zaxby's is a proud sponsor of the high school esports league. There's no need to hit pause on this stream or even in the game because you can order Zaxby's fried chicken sandwiches and salads for pickup and delivery on the Zaxby's app or at zaxby's.com. And you know what? I'm incredibly jealous because not only does it taste good, they support good esports as well. And that's everything I want from my chicken. Hey, that spicy Zax sauce is something else. I'll tell you that much. I, <laughs> I'm a regular at my Zach speeds by my university. So with that being said, we need more spicy plays in our lives. Let's take a look at map number four. We take things to bind. And this is, this is painful. This is NQHS reaping what they have sown. They lost on Icebox. Then they have Ascent and Haven, which I would kind of consider the more 50-50 maps. And you're stuck with, you have split, bind, and breeze. It's an easy split ban for WBV. They want to avoid that Viper at all costs, and it leaves you with the difficult decision. Do we play Bind and have to play against WBV on their best map, or do we go to Breeze, where probably neither of these teams have any practice and Prodigy's operator may come back to haunt you? And QHS chose the former. The difficult chess game, right? You lose on your map pick of Icebox, and suddenly it all goes downhill. It all begins to fall apart. Ray and Con are both in. So you can assume that a Cypher is going to be picked as Con has been the choice to play that Cypher on Wichita. I'm happy to see Lotus pick up a raise. However, no defensive Sage. I would have enjoyed seeing some, uh, some old Sage raise combos. And we have seen some incredibly obnoxious defenses of Hookah with Sage and her wall, especially over in Korea. Eugene springs to mind, I believe, of uh, Don Juan Kia Gaming who narrowly missed out on the chance to go to Reykjavik, about which we are all of incredibly excited. How EU of you to want, <laughs> to want, the, to want the sage above all things. Anyways, all right, the bias aside, we're I on say? bind. Look, I, I'm I, telegraphed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, at least I'm expecting the play to be a lot faster this game than it was last game. Last game, we got default after default after default after default. They seem to be very scared to make moves across the map, which is understandable they're very solid teams they respect each other a lot um bind it's gonna be less because they want to disrespect each other and more so because wbv are likely to be putting the pedal to the metal they want to be executing a lot we'll say is uh probably a bit of an understatement they're gonna be getting onto these sites very quickly trying to capitalize the most on kx and s and prodigy getting in off the back of tson's information and choosing which site they want to go to you can already see set up outside b they're not playing for for a short really at all and I expect to see that continue as the game moves on. On the other side, NQHS, not the most interesting setup we've got going on, but it's a setup I like a lot, actually. It leaves the Sova up through Heaven to rotate. The Reina can do it as well back through B to get there relatively quick should the BXQ be a problem. And it leaves your, or your Cypher in a really good position to find frags early and stay alive. Notice he'll never really leave Elbow, just waits for the trap bars to be triggered. And if they get triggered, it's basically a free frag. Yeah, that omen as well. Good chance to set up some one-way smokes, of course, on a short. Gonna smoke off elbow right here, but the Cypher doesn't feel the need to leave yet. We'll just avoid some of that incoming fire. May pay, pay for the post plant right here as Con goes for that. They are going to catch Ray on the rotate, though. So now Seu is in elbow all alone. And Lotus wins gunfight after gunfight. It's an oh absolute flawless massacre for Wichita. Oh my goodness, they just lined up and took headshot after headshot. NQHS, made to look foolish. I mean, how do you even respond to that? That wasn't like a misplay in, in retake or anything from NQHS. It was like, yeah, there were some small like issues with how they took the gun duels, obviously. But, but like, fundamentally, <laughs> on a macro scale, that was fine. And now, oh my god. You think push? Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. Five seconds. These teams have been so passive. 
against one another. They have not wanted to peak anything unless it was a, with a run it back when they knew they just respawn anyways. And now all of a sudden, we're getting rounds like that where WVV are just killing everything. Now we're getting NQHS pushing to their heart's content through everything. What did these teams eat in between these maps? Nerves, maybe. Lotus catches one, catches two. Here come even more, but out go the paint shells. Could they die from beyond the grave? No, Lotus gone for good right now. Peachy sends out a love note in the form of that dark cover and prodigies coming around the back now. Ghost in hand. Plenty of damage done to Peachy already. Won't get the finish onto Ray, who's stolen away a Spectre, but one versus three with 31 HP. It's not looking good, son. It's not looking good at all. The is going to inflict near sight. And Wichita, they may consider this one in the bag. Ray is terrified. Ray saw what happened last round. <laughs> good peaks. Can't quite land the shots, though. Nerves are high. We're asking what they... I, I think they got some Zaxby's chicken in them in between these games. This has been <laughs> crazy. Both teams just are took a little lunch spicy break. spicy Zax sauce just awakens something? Yeah, bring, really. Bring up, bring up the flavor <laughs> of the game. The flavor of the game today is spicy. Oh. Is spicy a flavor? Ah. <laughs> uh... I, I feel like, like I cook. A, I, I do. I'm, I do a lot of cooking, I shouldn't I be like consulted is, on these matters. I don't think spice is technically a flavor. It's. Uh, it's. I don't think it's. It's a it's temperature. A spice, it's a way of life. Producer. It's a way of life. Okay. It, it, it is a form of Zaxby's chicken sandwich. Why don't we leave it at that? It is. A, it is what this game is. <laughs> Zaxby's invented spicy. <laughs> Everyone Perfect. else just copying. <laughs> We're back to B, though, for WBV. It's been fairly successful here so far. Different position for Ray from rounds prior, which I, I do like seeing, but with this position, you kind of run the risk of being swarmed by these specters. Let's see if Sayu can kind of help him get out. Well, Sayu's going to start well. Will they get a second? KXNS manages to dismiss a Weibo and get a second one. Still Lotus and now has the rocket. It will not connect. The show remains going on. And now they've only got themselves a ghost. Bolt around the side. The spray not good enough to take down Prodigy. They're going to be able to steal a rifle right here. They have got themselves a phantom to play with. But up against two. They're rotating oh! together. A double peak! But both of them get mown down. Prodigy lives up to his name. What a play from the Wichita young ace. Oh my god, Prodigy. Sprays down two. Keeps it cool. The spray is perfect. Gets one off the headshot, one off the transfer. Getting some collateral bullets in there as well, making that second kill even quicker. On the other side, the nerves, I feel like, for NQHS are, are so high. It's the slip-ups from about the middle of the last game that they had. And it's, it's starting to show here. There's an opportunity there. I don't know which one of them it was. They, they started spraying at him, and they thought they got the kill, and they turned away before the spray was finished, before the frag was actually found, and now NQHS down 3-0. It's never stopped them from winning, uh, winning a lot of rounds thus far, but the early rounds certainly do hurt. Lotus sends in the paint shells. Ray's going to be forced out of this area, but still wins the duel against Lotus. Thanks to the Phantom, bro. Very nice donation from you. Kens has time now to pop the Empress if they so wish to. And uh, there's going to be a response forthcoming quite quickly. From North Quincy. Sounds of a teleporter means that they're, <gasps> they're going to be moving into the judge. Peachy's going to be waiting for them. They aren't going to be fast enough. That's a lot of damage done. But still, two versus three now. Wichita have themselves an advantage. Progeny moves away because that's going to be covered by KXNS. The plant is finished. And you know what? He's pretty quiet right now. After playing the last game with so many defaults and such like cerebral play this feels like I, i've put the pedal on the gas and i'm going mach 2 the the <laughs> speed the pace at which wv are playing at is insane the strategic depth that they've had so far they've had multiple different b or b takes that they've shown us they've had different post plants at b that they've shown us this a take came with a bonus b lurk that ended up winning them the round like I cannot imagine how deep their playbook is on this map. It is perfectly suited to them in basically every single way you could imagine. NQHS, like I mentioned, I don't think there was like a good map pick for them. I don't think there's even a possibility of it. Mm -hmm. it was, a, a breeze would be a toss up and leaving things to chance, but taking your odds here certainly doesn't feel much better. So again, the first four rounds have been hardly indicative of the entire game. We, we got to remember though, like, we talked about Breeze and what it would mean with an operator. And all the way back to our Icebox narrative door. 
We talked about what Prodigy can do with that. Maybe that still sticks in the mind of Quincy. Yes, it is a toss-up. And maybe the wrong choice was made to go over here onto Bind. Once again, there's going to be a lot of pressure towards B. And there's going to be a quick response from Quincy. We have three players here ready and waiting. Sayu now has at their disposal the blade storm but they can't connect lotus is just a little bit faster ray has to get out of dodge as prodigy begins to teleport in towards the back looks into tube and just pummels pt with a salvo of bullets con gets the plant done within the cyber cage and this is falling apart incredibly quickly for quincy Looked like they never had a chance but even now it might be time to save those weapons because guess what their economy well let's just say it's more Grecian than Abu Dhabi. I like it, though. I like the save. It's the best thing they could have done in this situation. And honestly, kind of more important than that, this is valuable time to sit and think. Like, if there <laughs> is ever a team... Like, you can, you can tell. It's palpable. It started with, like, missed cameras and missed shots and dropped sprays, but the nerves are really, really effective for NQHS. And on the opposite end, WEV look like they are feeling themselves. This, to them, feels as comfortable as it can possibly get. Yet, a nice break for your NQHS. I mean, not a nice break. You still lose the round, but you're, you're sitting there. You're talking. You're figuring out, hey, how can we turn this around? The answer, clean, strong Valorant. I want to see them play their style. They've been very rigid so far on Bind. The rotates have been slightly late. That round, I saw a little bit of something that I wanted to see, right? They got on there a bit quicker. They had a three-man rotate onto the B site. Yes, it was Lotus who opened the site up, though. Got that first frag. It was a, it was a disadvantageous fight for them and one that they shouldn't have won. Which, again, means that NQHS were putting themselves in the right position, but losing the duels. If they can fix those nerves and continue to put themselves in those positions by playing a fluid game of Valorant where they're rotating like we know they know how to do, I think they can get this game back on its feet. I was running move through teleporter there. Give server some information. But you got to remember. Prodigy is lurking towards A in case someone decides to ro rotate around the long way. Good stuff by so you now locking them out with the smoke. Take your man advantage and leave NQHS. Nothing moving too a. crazy left. That's okay. You're, you're perfectly fine with them moving A. East has a good position here. Lotus can't get the spike down without losing a good bit of health. I think they know where they are. Prodigy around the corner gets traded out for one. Great job by East. This is okay. Like I said, they're maintaining map control. And they're playing a fluid game of Valorant. They're playing off Instinct. And Instinct is taking them places. Tison accidentally downs Lotus oh, as no. well. Oh, it's a disaster for the WVV side. Everything's falling apart. There's spaghetti all over the floor. And it's NQHS sweeping it up for a round. Oh, it's a good job that NQHS won that round. Otherwise, there was the potential that Wichita were going to get more kills on Wichita than North Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, gonna be a flawless it's not not <laughs> do you, they, they at least deny some kill economy <laughs> sure <laughs> but north quincy definitely taking that time out using it maintaining the mental this is by far not a lost map north quincy need to bring us up to two to two and then the ball is in Wichita's court, right? If North Quincy can win this, do you want to risk the breeze? Do you want to risk the split against the Viper? I'd be taking breeze every day of the week if I was WBV, honestly. But I'm, uh, I am I don't remember how the last pick ban goes. I don't know if the loser just gets to choose or if it is a, a ban. Uh, the ban kind of picks for you kind of situation. But I guess that's a road we'll have to cross when we get there. For now, it's all about B again. WV lurking outside of it. Three players on it. They've got the quick rotate through teleporter. But Prodigy's lurking on A. Fantastic lurk. WV again. So, so smart with where they're placing these players. That was... I mean, sure. <laughs> Denying I guess away. it's just karma for the uh, for the shock dart frag earlier. <laughs> Denying away that server utility as well. So important for what is potentially a post-plant scenario here. For WBV, Ray is actually tagged, is incredibly low, and taking that peak against Tyson does not end well for them. KXNS may not get the headshot on the peak, but a little bit later, they will be able to secure it from the spray. There's the peak. East manages to win out against their counterpart, but they stand alone. Do you go for a one versus four Empress? I highly doubt it. You could at least try and clear through elbow here after you make sure that no one's taking too aggressive a peak in hookah. The time. Oh, he's just hitting shots, though. 
Wait, a good time it, to be hitting little, shots. There's a lot of time. Sprays through. Get some. The... Prodigy low-ish. Doesn't have the repeak. Bullets low. East now. So repeak time running, running off. Lows. The shots though, just, uh, again, they're just slightly off. Like those are shots that East, it feels like, would be connecting any other time. They've been so accurate. They've been at the top of the leaderboard. Accuracy's been off the chart so far. But now in, in this point in the game, match four, map four, the nerves are so high and it's just the little shots that are off. But every little bit affects a game that is this close. Maneva Sayu Magic, Frank UHS. It needs to return Peachy. The Operator has been playing mostly on A short thus far, and this will be a considerable departure from North Quincy of their default, but you know what? That's kind of what we asked for. There it is. That's what we want to see. This is, again, we talk a lot about uh, about pivot rounds for these teams and where they can turn around an economy. This is not only a pivot round for their economy for NQHS, but also a pivot round for just the morale. Oh, uh, Peachy goes down. The Lotus is out of their mind, though, right now. Say you on an unexpected angle, potentially, but may have been seen through the corner of our owl drone's field of vision. Bolt here has been revealed. The spike has been shown, and Tisa may decide to try and escape from the teleporter, but Say will not give them the option. Lotus still has influence, but not much health. It's going to be a two versus two as East moves through the teleporter, but Lotus has them pinned, and the same can be said of this omen. Say you needs to rotate through and may need to rotate quickly because there's so much pressure outside this door. I mean, East doesn't have to kill anybody here. East just has to sit there. Oh my god, that's sick. A spike. So that uh that Leo was actually for Sayu's peak. And because I didn't see anybody, they figure, hey, what's going on over here? Peek through. There's one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Back in. Sayu, Sayu's coming. Sayu's coming. The cavalry have arrived, but oh, just a touch late. They can play for spike now though. They know exactly where it is. It's There's only 20 seconds. Outside of a teleporter. All Sayu has to do is not die. Prodigy never saw him coming! They didn't hear oh. him get the gun out! What a stealthy play from the jet! Excellent timing there from a pair of duelists. East and Sayu managed to get it done, but they only escaped the round with a single rifle. It is a gorgeous display of how to use time to your advantage. Uh, I, it looked so much that East was stuck in that teleporter, but East was kind of in that teleporter have their own volition Safe space. like yeah it's, it's like you, you can't come in here i'm just gonna sit here you're not allowed to move you can't go get that spike because the second you leave to get that spike you're gonna get shot in the back of the head which is exactly what happened the omen left the race got killed everything worked perfectly there and that is what those two duels know how to do that's the level of game sense that we're talking about here with nqhs and when they're hitting their shots when those nerves aren't affecting them affecting them quite as much the game can turn around Okay, so the major change we've seen here is Scyther's now playing on A. They've decided to keep this Omen on B. Lotus needs to be very careful passing through here. Is that a blast pack kill? No, it's paint shells that killed Sayu. Managing to catch out, but Lotus is a little bit faster. The 3k already pick up a fresh rival to make sure that reloading's not going to be an issue. And then go for this spike plant. The showstopper is on deck, but they don't have much health to play with. The capacity potentially for a double kill if they throw this through CT is still an ever-present threat and wide post-plant positions here from WBV are going to be so difficult to burn through. He sends out Alea. The near site is not fired upon. Some good reticence. Some good holding back here from WBV. Playing it patient. They win out against these. Ray baits with the spike defuse, but they were going up against three. And characteristically, WBV have managed to win out here with three rifles still on the board. And we're starting to go back and forth with these rounds, but there's two big things to look at. Like you said, A, they're winning rounds with rifles on deck, most notably three or more whenever they win these rounds. After that, we can't afford to go back and forth in these rounds. NQHS needs a streak somewhere. It could come at the start of the next half. It could come at the end right here. I don't care, but they need it somewhere. They've got ultimates up on deck, but none of those, I mean, it's not particularly powerful. You've got a Hunter's Fury, which is maybe your best shot at making an impact with one of these, whereas WBV have uh, something pretty powerful in terms of the showstopper. It buys them space, and that's space that NQHS have really struggled to get back. Normally, you know, the, the Ray's ultimate, the showstopper, it's okay. But in the hands of WBV and against a team like NQHS, who very much want to hold the space that they have at the beginning of the round or make plays to get it back, it's very hard for them to play against the showstopper that effectively forces them back into space they're never going to get.
The first A Executor they're going to start using the Hunter's Fury on to default, and Con is forced to move. Sayu's going to be able to pick up that as Con begins to flee away. They didn't clear through U Haul, but Prodigy, they're managing to keep their patience. And while it wasn't the cleanest kill, it's still a kill on the board. WBV, no spike plant yet, and they are at a numbers disadvantage. They were at a gun disadvantage as well. They have control of heaven, and Prodigy could go oh! big here, but Ray with the double! How does he do it? What a play with the Sheriff. That was so necessary. There was I nothing in the bank. They were running on fumes for NQHS. But now they may be able to bring this back as a series. They've got themselves some rifles. They've got themselves a stay of execution. But the scoreboard door, it still doesn't lie. I mean, look, it looks dire. It looks bad at 3-7. But getting this up to a 5-7 half would do so much. For NQHS. It, all of a sudden, it isn't the game that we lost five rounds in a row at the beginning of. All of a sudden, it is, hey, a game that we were down one round in the half. That is, you are more than okay with that. That is such a morale boost. And on come WBV, though, ready to stomp all over hopes and dreams and any sense of morale that NQHS had just Check built. This rotation. Check this rotation. They send out the showstopper, but now look at Prodigy already lining up that paranoia. They can spray through here. Will they get more than one? No, they will not. It's traded out there by Ray. Once again, the hero, and now they can claim control of Haven themselves. Ray's going to move into you, but still wins out that duel against lurking players. Lotus here needs to take the duel and needs to win. Ray checks the corner and wins it out again. Who is this inhuman cypher who has suddenly joined the North Quincy team? Tyson had the advantage of the ping, but it was not enough. North Quincy have come alive on bind. Every single game has had an X factor. It started out with the operator in, game, in map number one. We head on to map number two. Sayu goes insane. Map number three, Peachy starts stepping up. Map number four now, it's time for Ray. Oh my god, a singular player has to find each of these teams every single time we ask them to. And I'm curious to see if we can keep this performance up. It's been a stellar set of rounds for Ray. He could lead them on to get that 5-7 half that they've been dreaming of. But WV are going to do everything in their power to stop this. It's the final round of the half. And they're steaming straight towards B. But there's four players there. NQHS have the read. B has been where there has been previously a load of success for Wichita. Look at this aggressive angle, though, from Sayu. That's going to need to be checked. But if you look that way, you're not going to look the other. Still, nice spray there from Lotus. Gets one, but will be traded out for it as Bolt's going to rejoin the rest of their team who are trying to defend this push from Gardens. They've managed to identify KXNS, but Tyson brings out the Hunter's Fury. Blinded and useless. Still, they will manage to escape here. PG with their life. Three players remain on each side but a health advantage right now is viable for wichita and they have the neural theft if they can just find themselves a course a corpse prodigy taking a little bit of damage here both of these omens basically hanging on by a thread slow play ray. Three, three no ray getting a little bit too big for his britches which are now appropriately the corpse, on the floor that's a really, really important corpse as well, not to mention really vital left. information. Everybody if knows Peachy where Peachy Peachy can dive to a wall bang here through the tube. 17 HP. Oh. Will not last him long. Out goes for Sonic Arrow. If he gets pinged here, he could die. No ping thus far. East pops the Best Empress. They need to one versus three, but mathematic rules win. And so do the three. That's going to be moving out of a half here. A very successful attacking half for Wichita. They look good in the first half. That streak of rounds looks fantastic for Wichita. NQHS has the opportunity to do the same back here, though. This is a, a defining pistol round for the entire match. Let's see what NQHS have to offer. Frenzy, Sheriff's up on the board. They're going for some big hitting guns right now. I want to see them play fast onto a site. They need to be sure not to get caught up by the Cypher. That is the most important thing. Khan is, I mean, from what we've seen, on this team to play Cypher. Right? If you're going towards B, you have to anticipate it. If I see NQHS get caught out by a trap wire, I'm going to lose it. That is the only thing they have to keep an eye out for. The only thing. A couple of other players. But one-way smoke, of course, coming through from the defensive omen on a short. So 
It's going to be a lot of pressure here towards B, but that means more trap wires to try and deal with. It seems like only one has been put down thus far. Maybe looking to bring one out a little bit later in case they need to try and make some kind of retake happen. It's Listen. for elbow, I think. Yeah, likely for elbow. You're exactly right, Dor. Did look a little weird. I'm not sure if it actually gets inside of it. We'll see. I don't know. It looked cool. I'll, I'll give him benefit of the doubt. Assume it did. There's one on Ooh, that guy. He's getting peppered, though. Yep. Khan's cut out. His teammates are here to help, though. Which is, honestly, he's bait, at the at the very least, to draw these players in. Very tantalizing towards the center of the site. But NQHS able to resist uh, the the most aggressive of urges and back their way out. But now into Lotus, who has been raining over this A site. Well... Paint shells go out. Sayu doesn't take too much damage right there. A little bit of a Leah contact, but Lotus isn't going to peek that one again. Still, Tyson taken out at long range by the Frenzy, and Con has no health to play with, and Peachy's going to take away what little remains. Uh -oh. Lotus overwhelmed. Peachy has entered the lobby once more. Five to eight. This is once again pretty rescuable, especially considering that they're very likely to win the Spectre round. This feels really good for NQHS. Even just a pistol round. With four members alive? Like, that is a, that's a change of pace. And look at this. They're holding on to cash. Keep the classic on Sayu. Trade up for a frenzy. Okay. They're buying all the way up to Spectres. I think it's the right decision. Right there. They've been taking a lot more risk this game, which I appreciate. Uh, but they're not going to be taking to this round. There's no need to. They just need to transfer this win into an economy. Nothing more than that. Nothing too crazy it's only a three round deficit let's see if they can turn this one back up pressure in towards bathrooms there's a pushed up rain and they have to be careful of him prodigy pushed up into his own smokes again getting a little bit cheeky with it oh no nobody caught him they won't oh, catch ken's oh, either oh my god. god dude chill out wait prodigy, is prodigy well. in the corner as well they continuously ken's get rewarded another. for this risk Ken's is doing so much of a sheriff, and Ray is once again alone. They've got to check their right, but they will not do oh, so. No. Ghost in hand for Lotus. But th they lost respect around. Oh, no, 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 no. Disaster is an understatement right now for yep. MQHS. That is not a round you are FEMA allowed to lose. to this. <laughs> Nine to five. Now NQHS tasked with doing the exact same thing back. Sayu buys a judge. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. We haven't seen WV get caught out by a judge a single time this entire match. They've done an excellent job of avoiding them. Now playing it on the attacking side against Phantoms and Vandals is going to be incredibly difficult, but they push in. It's all up to the sheriffs to connect these shots from long range. Sayu runs across as bait. A quick Tate dashing through, looking for somebody over in Lamps. I'll give you a spoiler right now. Nobody's there. Even while blinded, Peachy's good for one, though. And QHS, the pressure on. They've got map control. They just have to get that spike down. But it's locked away in bathrooms. Phantom knows. Or rather, KX and S knows. Phantom in hand. The owl drone's going to reveal their location, and no one's going to be moving through just yet. Nice wall bang there. On to Ray. Removing the X Factor. Oh, removing East as well. KX and S on an absolute tear in the last few rounds of buying. Guess who's isolated by themselves? Bolt can only just jump across the doors, providing an, amu an amusing sideshow to all of these marksmen who are ready. Sayu has been marked previously by KX and S, and I'm pretty sure everyone's just going to be like, you know what? Maybe we won't. <laughs> and that round was a very good idea from nqhs uh what they were going for was the the normal you know a short execute smoke it out get on site quickly but there was a bit of a disconnect they sent two players in bathroom so they went for a split but they smoked as if they were just taking from a short instead of smoking uh behind the radionite box and on uh on the u-haul truck Instead, they smoked the U-Haul truck, and then they smoked away from bathrooms, so those bathrooms players were just isolated, and Spike was stuck over there, completely stranded, so there's some miscommunication within NQHS that caused them to, to throw the wrong smoke or send players in the wrong direction. I don't know which one it was, but they, they got pain for it, because the beginning of that round was actually really, really good for them. They gained a lot of space, even if they didn't get a frag. Sheriff for the Blade Storm from Sayu, looking way. to recapture that magic. Might happen on A, but they've got to worry about this one-way smoke. The lurk won't maintain for long, potentially. There's going to be... Oh, okay. The uh, <laughs> the owl drone has been revealed by the recon bolt. But so has Lotus. That's just going to force a little bit of a back step here. There's a heavy stack on B at this moment. But remember, 
It's for Jet who has for Spike at this moment. And they're going to be moving in very aggressively with a Blade Storm. Better to hand it off onto the Rainer so that in their aggressive movements, they will not leave it stranded. KXNS has been an absolute terror here. But Seiyu manages to bring it on back. They miss the paranoia, but the Snives are just as inaccurate. Prodigy still has control of U-Haul and still is going to get some value out of it. Seiyu is down. Might get pinched right here, but gets away to the safety of the loving arms of their team. NQHS, they may have a plant, but they are running out of friends. They've got one in U-Haul. They've got one down B short. And Peachy and Bolt, they've managed to keep this alive uh -oh. somehow. Out goes the paranoia. Maybe Peachy can clutch this, but no one's going to peek when they're near sighted. There's one. Can they get the second? No, they cannot. Con gets it done. Lifts up from there the fuse. You talking to me? Gives him a couple bullets. Yeah, he was talking to you. Peachy was so consistent on Haven with those clutches. Unfortunately, this isn't Haven anymore. This isn't your territory. This is enemy ground, and only WPV know how to accurately move around them as swiftly as they have. They know all the angles, all the shots. It's so well practiced. You can tell every single play, every single execute, every bit of defense, every rotate has been perfected by them. NQHS are fighting through a veritable fortress right now. But I'll be damned if they're not giving it their best shot. 5 to 11, things look a little dire here. But this is their best opportunity to turn it back around. They've got weapons in hand, and they're headed towards B. Can they shut this cypher down? Peason does a little trolling, buying that operator for a second. Throwing off a shot to make the sound. Just so everyone knows he has enough money to make that happen. <laughs> there goes the owl drone coming through. Okay, teleport coming through here. Instantly dissuaded. Jesus isn't going to allow that one to happen. But now, on the back side of Tomb, there is the potential for a wall bang. Wow! He's still faster than Seiyu! How does he get it done? Con takes out their own other half as Bolt and Peachy once again find themselves as the ones who have to try and make this work. But they're moving right into the crosshairs of Con, who has managed to come alive but finds himself dead. Five to two. They need to play for overtime to survive in this tournament. But WBV, Wichita. They are one round away on a map where they have shown supremacy, grit, and determination from claiming our scholarship prize in the entirety of this grand finals. 5,000 smackaroonies on the end of one more win on a round for WBV. What are they doing here? Defensive side. Look at this from Lotus. Do it. Oh, oh, please not the showstopper. He's going to do it. Bullying. He's doing it. Oh, my God. Oh, it's only one. one. Oh, and he misses the paint shells. Oh, Lotus. But dreaming big. But it's only when you saw the highest that you can fall like Icarus. Still, no falling thus far. It's only going to be a trade for one. The Empress has already been popped as well by WBV. They feel that maybe Kens can get it done. And Kens has been an absolute monster on this A site. I don't think NQHS know just how fortunate they are that that showstopper only killed one person. <laughs> yep. That was an entire mound of players sitting in front of it, and it only grazed one. They'll it's trade it back on the KXNS. Ultimate's up, Neural Theft for the attackers, but it's Lotus through the freaking cyber cage, getting two, and the round's falling apart for NQHS. Bolt running for his life. Collect yourself, buddy. You're going to need the biggest clutch you've ever pulled off. Peeks into another, but Lotus is just unstoppable. On Vine, WBV Wichita, take away the $5,000 grand prize. Again and again, $5,000 of scholarship prizing delivered squarely into the hands of Wichita Buffs Varsity. And you know what? Who's beautiful hands are going to be mostly grubby over that check it's gonna be lotus for flower power again and again you can see how this kid earned that radiant rank because they are an absolute pog champ a demon a monster <laughs> on these duelists oh my god wbv what a fight and i think I, this goes all the way back to map one they won icebox and they freaking earned it like that the one round from prodigy the the one game by prodigy defined the series every other map went relatively according to plan yes people were winning map picks that weren't theirs but that you were they were winning in ways that we kind of expected the one win that came from where we least expected it was prodigy's operator play a map number one and honestly that's where i'm giving the mvp oh man yeah it, it's a good mvp you, you got the the knock-on effects the butterfly effect of that operator's value reverberated through this entire series 
the entire best of five was knocked off kilter for our first seat in north quincy with their map pick at the beginning by how threatening that jet with an operator was but when it came to consistently winning out these duels lotus sank so many rounds round after round falling by their radiant duelist and when i look for good gunplay i don't want to look any further no and we've got our mvp we've got our winner ladies and gentlemen that's five thousand dollars going to wichita buffs varsity north quincy a hell of a fight it has been wonderful having you here we had the first through four seeds going into the semi-finals it could not have ended any better we had overtime straight through semi-finals these games were just ridiculous for the grand finals and ladies and gentlemen if you want to get in on any of the action hscl will be returning once again our weekly show where we show some of the best esports athletes from high school across the nation compete for over thirty thousand dollars in scholarships and can witness some high octane esports and highlights and full match showcases from your favorite teams in round one of the competition and heading into the grand finals it has been such a great time we've shown you guys the best that high school esports has to offer and no doubt next time it's going to be doing it even bigger it is going to go huge you don't want to miss any of it and you know what while our grand finals may be done and HSEL Spring Major may well be done. You don't want to miss out on the final little parts, which will be brought to you by Dora and I after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, just a bunch of admin before we finish, because you know what? Dora and I just wanted to spend more time <laughs> with you lovely people. And we thought we'd tell you just a little bit. You guys saw the check. Let's bring it on up. We've got the 5K in scholarship that's gone over to our winners. That's, a, that's that a real will, check, by the way. That's... That, that, that is a real check, not at all generated by pixels. No. It, 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 it's for real real scholarship money though and that's what's important and you know what if you think you could win that check for five thousand dollars worth of scholarship then you need to keep an eye on the hsel social channels to figure out when the signups are going to start opening up for our summer majors and our summer events because if you think you're good at super smash brothers if you think you're good at rocket league if you think you're good at overwatch or even if uh like dora and i you think you're good at valorant that could be you could be you. And not to mention, there's more on the stream. Follow the stream. Follow HSEL on TikTok, which I found them on there somehow, which is just ridiculous that they showed up. <laughs> I'm too much anyway, of a to have tips off. They, <laughs> they've got a huge following on TikTok. I don't know why, but like, so be it. Go follow them on TikTok or whatever. Go watch the Intel Winner's Circle, ladies and gentlemen. For this season, though, that's all like Day and I have. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having us. But until Intel Winner's Circle, until that summer season, we'll see you guys later.